Welcome back to Man Now Sports. As you can see from the thumbnail, we got more content. Uh, this is Mario Chomas. This is LeBron James. This is the OGs podcast, which is Mike Miller, Udonis Haslam. You know they got a history with the Miami Heat. Um, and they invited Mario Chomas on, and they had a good conversation, man. So uh, we're going to go through some of the stuff they said, because you, if you remember Mario Chomas uh, not too long ago, a couple of years ago, you know, he was on the podcast and he said nobody feared LeBron. You know, and that was his observation from it. And, you know, I think that was a response to the question on who the GOAT was. And, you know, he was just talking about a couple of things. And that's one of the things he mentioned. He was like, man, when it came to Michael Jordan, man, that was a fear there. And he's not the only player that has said that. He said it was a fear there legitimately. Like, you know, before before the night or the night before the game, it was like, you know, people that was matching up against him was like, man, I got to get a good night's sleep. I got to uh, I, I got to make sure I uh, eat the right meal. I got to make sure I'm watching more film than anybody, man. It was a, it was a real fear. And he was saying that it was uh, not present uh, when dealing with LeBron. And he caught a lot of flack about it. Tristan Thompson came out and said uh, some uh, some things about Mario Jones. I think his friendship with LeBron was pretty much over. You know, it was a lot of stuff with that, man. So we're going to get into all that. I'm going to play that for y'all. Uh, we got some Luka Doncic stuff, man. We got some uh, other stuff about uh, uh, the NBA and its decline and its, uh, you know, departure away from uh, being a defensive league. And then we ended with Joel Embiid, man. <clears throat> so uh, we got to do all of that good stuff, man. I see some people already in the comments, man. Uh, somebody said something about Dylan Brooks. Uh, somebody said something about Kobe as a champion. Uh, yeah, five-time champion for sure, for sure. What's up, Slim? Uh... Yeah, I got to play Mike. <laughs> What's going on, Roland? Yeah, 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 man. Y'all be ready to call in, man. We got good topics today. Uh, go ahead and hit the share button right now. Also, hit the like button on, on your way in here, man. A lot of people coming in here and enjoying the content and forgetting to hit the like button. Or maybe uh, it's, maybe I got people in here that, that hate my content that just here to just, you know, uh, uh, I don't know, hit the dislike button. I don't know what they're hitting, but they're not hitting the like button. So make sure y'all hit the like button on your way in. Hit that share button as well. Uh, throw a comment in there. Let me know uh, who all up in here. Let me know where y'all from. You know, uh, it's been reaching some, some uh, you know, like Germany, some uh, France, uh, uh, Canada, you know. So it's been, it, Pirate Cast has been getting some reach, man. I think that's real good. Um, invite somebody in here, man. Uh, Had them subscribe as well, man. Because the more we grow, the more stuff we can do with it. Uh, so make sure you hit the like button and the share button. Um, also... Uh, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and do that. Uh, if you're watching this from Facebook, go ahead and head over to YouTube and give us a subscription there. Um, uh, also, I do. A, I got to throw the email address out there for if if you don't already have it for anybody that's watching who uh, want to sponsor the show or uh, who want me to who want to advertise on the show, man. Uh, the official man down at gmail.com is the podcast. Email us there uh, and, and and contact us and let us know what what you're thinking about. Uh, and we do have a sponsor in this episode is sponsored to you by Underdog Fantasy. Underdog Fantasy is the best place to play fantasy sports. I want to tell you about the easiest way to get in on some NBA action with Underdog Fantasy and their pick em game. Just find your favorite player or any player for that matter. Pick higher or lower on that player's stats and you can win up to 20 times your money in one night. Pick between two or five players to fill your pick em entry. Get every pick right, and you can net yourself some serious cash. Use the promo code MANDOWNSPORTS, and you can get your deposit doubled up to $100. You got to check on the map to make sure your state is eligible to play Underdog Fantasy. But as soon as you do, and if your state is, go ahead and download Underdog Fantasy's app. Use the promo code MANDOWNSPORTS, and you can, like I said, you can get that $100 uh, match on your first deposit. And I would want to thank Underdog Fantasy for sponsoring Man Down Sports. All right, man, let's get started, man. So uh, the OG's podcast, Yodonis has them, Mike Miller, and um, y'all got to uh, excuse my dog. Well, not my dog, but my neighbor's dog out there barking up a storm right now. Uh, so I uh, apologize for that, mom. But uh, the OG's podcast has Yodonis has them, Mike Miller. Uh, I don't know how long they've been around, probably some months now. And uh, their, contact is, their content is getting better and better and better. Uh, they're inviting more and more guests on there, man. Uh, a lot of a lot of stuff that's going that went on in that Heat organization, which we a, a lot of people we like that Heat organization for what they stand for, and some things are coming out, man. And this is one of the uh, the good things that came out because everybody remember Mario Chomas with his famous "Nobody Feared LeBron" thing. If you don't remember, 
Uh, here's a soundbite of it. Nobody fears Gronk. Nobody's like, damn, I gotta go play this Gronk, man. Nobody said that. I don't know why. Right. Because I've seen people be scared when they actually line up to them, but they're not scared thinking about that match. Right. You hear anybody from that era talk about going against Jordan, there's a fear. Right. So when you have people that fear a player, then that's telling you something different already. Like, Jordan's just that guy. Like, everything was, I want to be like Michael. Right. So that that was the famous uh, thing that got him in a lot of trouble. Nobody feared LeBron. And he pretty much lost his friendship with LeBron over that. Um, and a lot of other um, Cavaliers and LeBron supporters, you know, pretty much kind of separated themselves from, Le you know, Mario Chalmers for that as well. Tristan Thompson being one of those guys. Uh, so it was good for you, Donald has him to invite him on the on the show to help him kind of clear the air with that. Uh, so this is the, how that conversation went when they asked him, you know, tell us what you was thinking and what you really meant when you said that. Well, it was a good sport about it, but I mean, just talk about the relationship now. You know what I'm saying? Obviously. You know, me and you still keep in touch, you know what I'm saying? But everybody's kind of going their separate ways. We don't talk as much, but it was one particular situation. I think I wanna I wanna let you explain yourself because I think people took it out of context. You misunderstood, you know what I'm saying, or whatever the situation may be. But speak on the fact, you know what I'm saying? The conversation of when Bron name came up, man, it was like nobody really feared Bron, nobody really scared of Bron. Like I was at the crib, I kind of got what y'all think you were saying, you know what I'm saying? But I was shocked. <laughs> You were shocked. You were shocked. Killer, why was you why shocked? Because that was because I I think people do fear, bro. Personally, so my thought process was this: as a basketball player, obviously a great basketball player, mm -hmm. but Brown is going to win the basketball game. Yeah, so he's going to play however he needs to play to win the basketball game. Brown is not going to make it personal. Brown is not going to make it personal. I don't. Think, MJ will make it personal. Yeah, I don't think. I don't think people fear anybody like that. You shouldn't if you're at the level we're at. But like, like if you're reading between, like to me, like shit, you better fear that. Back in the day, they used to fear that black cat. No, no, hundred percent. You had MJ that night. <laughs> Diff you probably had different, different, different situations. Though. Like to me, hey, so, so he corrected Mike Miller real quick. He was like, "Yeah, I don't think nobody fears nobody at this level." Oh, nah, nah, hell nah. You gonna feel that black cat? That's what he said. You know, so LeJohnis had, even though he's a LeBron guy and a LeBron supporter and got rings with LeBron and they probably still cool, he's being real. Nah, man, that black cat, man, you better feel that black cat, right? You gonna have to respect that. You have to feel that. If you don't, he's gonna embarrass you. That's how. That's how good Mike was. The, the way he can turn that thing on. You know, he could turn it on from you saying something wrong to him or you know any little thing motivated him. So, uh, the way he would turn it on and what your Dallas head, he said he's gonna make it personal. Right. So he and I think he was making a difference, but a distinction between him and LeBron, because he was saying LeBron is good. He's going to be geared toward winning the game. Just like Mike is as well, just like Kobe is as well. But he's he's going to he's going to do it like everybody say he makes the right play. He's going to do the right thing. So if if he's processing the game and see that, you know, uh, me breaking down the defense and dishing out to Mike Miller, Shane Battier and Ray Allen. Uh, is it, gonna is gonna be the way that we can surgically, uh, you know, uh, you know, like you know, disable that defense. Then that's what he'll do. He's not gonna take it personal on the guy that's guarding him and say that I gotta prove to you that there's nothing you can do. I want to make you look helpless, right? And I think that's what Michael Jordan's mindset was at. So for someone who had to come in with the matchup to stop Mike. The fear was there because it was like, man, if this dude really want to turn it on tonight, if he really gets motivated, that's how that we've seen him do it. That's how that's how quick he can run hot on you and turn it on and get you 50, 55, 60, 63, whatever the case may be. Right. And and it's going to be a real personal. Uh, I'm going after you. I'm, I'm going to talk trash. I'm going to be in your face. I'm going to do all that. And then I'm going to guard you and defend you on the end and let you know it ain't nothing you can do against me. You know, so that's that. That's what he's saying. Look, now it's it's a it's a fear with that black cat. Like now, it's like yeah, there might not be a fear, but they didn't they didn't feel comfortable. They didn't feel comfortable having to fucking guard that nah, motherfucking LeBron. That. See, everybody wouldn't change the words. I, see, I don't. I'm I'm looking at a snippet, right? Like yeah, that's, I'm, I'm looking that's at the snippet. biggest thing because when I so, said it, so to me, like I was shocked. That's my I'm answering what I said. Or were you shocked? I was shocked because I saw a snippet. Uh huh. And your snippet doesn't look good. So explain it. When I said it, right, I was basically saying that. 
the players that we went against didn't fear Brown, like the Danny Grangers, the Luau Dings, the Jimmy Butlers, the people that we were seeing in the playoffs. Some low level They names. wasn't fear Brown because the media was killing Brown the year he came to Miami. Like they all they did was talk about, oh, he can't win, he can't do this, he can't do that. Then when we lose to Dallas and he doesn't have a good series, they're killing him even more. So both of y'all know I was close, I was close as hell to Brown. Yeah. So when he's going to work out, he's calling me, like, real come on, it's gonna work out. Wow, so that doing was those close. workouts, I hear conversations. I hear him saying, like, people don't think I could do this. Okay, let me work on this. All turnaround jumpers, all right. jab, stab jumpers, mm. all back to the basket stuff. So when we come to that next year and everybody's like, make Bron shoot, make Bron do this. You can't make Bron do nothing. He's 280, 6'8". One of the best athletes we've ever had. So he's going through you. Now he knows the... No, notice when all the criticism, and I remember this because I, I I was... when the When the media was so critical of LeBron... I was on his side. I was rooting for the Miami Heat Big Three. I wanted them to do good because I hated that the media was was uh, putting all this pressure on him, right? Uh, so, I, believe it or not, at that time, you know, if 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 you know me, I I hate false narratives. I hate I hate uh, I uh, I don't like unfairness. I don't like people to gang up on a person uh, unjustly and stuff like that. So when LeBron was getting all of that heat. I was the guy that was like, man, I hope this guy wins so he he can shut the media up. I wanted the guy to win so bad, right? Uh, so uh, I was actually rooting for Miami at this time. Um, and I remember all of the things that they were saying in the media, Stephen A. Smith and all these other guys on these debate shows, saying that he can't do X, Y, and Z, which was true. Dallas, The Dallas series did expose some things that LeBron was lacking in his game. And exposed some things uh, that that showed that that Miami Heat Big Three wasn't clicking the way they needed to click. And what fixed it is D Wade taking a step back and saying, "Well, instead of me playing my A plus game, I scale my game back to a B." And Chris Bosh was saying, "Instead of me playing my A plus game, I scale my game back to a C," because we need to have LeBron's A plus game because the way he plays is probably the only way he can really play his a plus game you know and we seen with him without having the ball and having shooters around him and being able to dictate everything his game looked like a c because when wade was getting loose with the ball in his hand in that dallas series and he was averaging 20 plus game you know almost 25 a game that series lebron was averaging 17 i think chris bosh after average more than lebron if not close to it so LeBron looked like a role player when he's playing with, you know, without playing his style. So Wade had to say, we got to let LeBron play his style 100 percent and we'll figure out what to do around him. Right. So um, that that's that's something that um, that uh, uh, Mario Chalmers is kind of hitting on that the media was bringing uh, to the forefront. Like LeBron can't go on the post if he don't have the ball. His post game not good enough. He can't catch and shoot from mid range that well. He can't stretch the floor by uh, standing in the corner and being a catch and shoot three point shooter that way. And they point out all these flaws in his game. He's not going to hit free throws in the fourth quarter. Uh, you know, he's turning the ball over too much. All of these things that they were saying about LeBron was true. And LeBron was what Mario Chalmers is saying. LeBron was uh, aware of all of that, and he would talk to Chalmers about it. And he said, "They think I can't do X, Y, and Z. I'm gonna work on it this summer." And we seen him go and work on his uh footwork and his post game with Hakeem but that was one workout that they post I don't know how how long he actually worked with Hakeem but if you can't shoot free throws and you're Shaq you don't go in for a weekend to work with Mark Price and then come back and be like all right I fixed it I'm good now right so and and you know you get a you if you can't shoot free throws and you're Shaq you get Mark Price to follow you around the rest of your career and help fix your shot bit by bit by bit and when you need to recalibrate you recalibrate you know you know so that's what you do so i would have been more impressed if lebron was like uh it's just as much as i care about my body i spend a hundred or, or a million dollars on my body every year to make sure my body is is right i, I would have loved to see lebron say i'd rather put hakeem on the payroll or how about you give hakeem a job with the miami heat organization and I work with him for the rest of my career on my post. I would have rather seen that than seeing him go uh, work with Hakeem for a weekend and then uh, it was over. He, he just all of a sudden fixed his, his, his post game, which he didn't, right? And that's the reason why uh, Mario Chalmers said that 
uh he was aware of all those things they said he he was lacking he worked on them but when you get on the floor at the end of the day he's still 6 8 260 all he had to do was make up his mind and say you can't stop me from getting to the hole so what made the miami heat work is not lebron fixing his deficiencies it was actually way deciding to say well so we can only highlight your strengths we'll play role player around you and we'll just figure it out that way the real basketball now he knows how everybody's game plans against him so now he's attacking different so your mindset is going against that it's like oh i know what he can't do because the media has been saying xyz but you haven't been in the gym seeing what he's working on now that he's going and he's got 24 with 20 points in the paint you like damn what to do now now that fear comes is like I don't know how to stop him. I don't know what to do now. Yeah, I just so that's I, what I, I was basically saying. I just think the word fear is 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 the wrong word, right? Like I don't think at mm-hmm. our level, I don't think people fear anybody. I, and like you're not gonna beat my ass. Like you're not gonna beat me up, right? Like are you uncomfortable? I don't care what anyone says. I All the motherfuckers you name, scare. I didn't we're say uncomfortable scare. going into game one or going into game two. They're uncomfortable guarding that motherfucker. Like I don't care. Y'all can say what y'all want. Now fear is a different thing. Like fear is like dog. Like oh you're gonna kill. Like you're gonna beat me. Like that's fear. Like I don't think anyone fears nobody. But I that don't... motherfucker was. You're uncomfortable checking that dude. I'm telling you're you. You're definitely uncomfortable. But the word fear and scared is two different things. I can see if I was like nobody was scared of Bron. Yeah, y'all y'all was definitely scared of Bron because y'all know what he could do. But fear in that matchup is like I don't have a fear because I know he could be beat. I know he's been beat. I know Jeez. what he can't do. But when he's you ain't doing it, that motherfucker, boy. You yeah, that's fear. what I'm saying. When he, once he's doing it, it's kind of like, oh, okay, now, like, oh, this is a whole different beast. Like, we could all agree from that Dallas series to that next year, Brown was a whole different animal, right? Yeah. Everybody says that. So once y'all say that, why are y'all looking at me crazy when I said nobody feared Brown when y'all was killed? <laughs> Yeah, nothing I mean, to do with I, his character. Like I said, I, I, I literally just. Yeah, I, nothing. No, I'm talking about other people. It's yeah. like I said, nothing about his character, nothing about his game, nothing about the person. I said how people viewed him. So, how's your relationship with him now? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn. Let me get up here. I don't sound know. like this is going to be interesting. I don't know. I honestly don't know. I mean, I shoot him a text here and there, say what's up, congratulations, da 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 da. Sometimes it takes back, sometimes he don't. So well, sometimes he do take back. Yeah, sometimes he do. Yeah, so it's not like I don't think there's beef between yeah. us. I, I still got a lot of love, for Brian. You know that he helped me get my championship. Like that's one of my favorite teammates. Like I ain't got no beef. I don't have no disrespect to him. Nothing. There's some other people that I don't like out there, but you know that's a whole different story. But Brian ain't one of them. <laughs> All right, real. <laughs> so he, if, if y'all need to go listen to the uh, OG's podcast, he got into that other teammate from the Miami, uh, not from the Miami Heat, but the other teammate that he didn't like. I think it was Tristan Tossum. So, so he got he got into that. Uh, but you can hear what he was saying. He was trying to clear it up and and say, yeah, at the time I was right, and y'all know I was right. Y'all just admitted that this is what everyone in the media was saying about LeBron, and we knew it was true about LeBron that that Dallas series. And everything that happened before the Dallas series, him losing to uh, uh, Dwight Howard in the head-to-head matchup, him losing to uh, the Boston Big Three, him not being able to get back to the finals, him getting swept uh, by San Antonio in the finals. Like, all of those things led up to the Dallas series. And even on the Super Team, you lose that and you uh, perform with 17 points a game and uh, being guarded by Jason Terry at times, Jason Kidd at times. Uh, you know that you know they they would switch anybody on you. You you call for that screen. No one was okay. We switching it, and we going under the screen, and you gonna have to beat us that way. So up to that point to Dallas, what Mario Chalmers was saying was true. Nobody feared him like that, right? Now he cleared it up and was like, "Hey, look, from Dallas series when he figured out what he needed to do, and Miami figured out how they wanted to attack people, and LeBron figured out how he wanted to attack people, then." Yeah, you could say that he started putting fear in people's uh, heart a lot, you know. Uh, but but this is why being on the super team, you know, it's kind it's kind of easy to put fear in people's heart when you got uh, 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 Flash, D Wade, and 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 Bosh on this side, and then you got the best shooting in the league on the coming off the bench in Ray Allen. It's easy to do that. It ain't a lot of teams that had a super team. So, um, uh, I, I I like that he came in and cleared it up. I like that uh, Yadonis has him allowed him to come on the platform and clear that up. I think that was cool. Uh, but those are my thoughts about it. I think Mario Chalmers, you know, he, he didn't tell no lies. And I think that is a big difference between him, Mike, and Kobe. Um, um, uh, you you definitely feared that, back, uh, that black cat. You definitely feared him. So 
Uh, that's my thoughts, man. So now let's open the phone lines up. Uh, let's let y'all call in. Let's see y'all thoughts. I see a, a whole lot of comments in there. Um, you know, uh, one one of the person who 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 who's a LeBron uh, supporter. I don't know who Pam Brown is, um, but um, I see that name a lot in the comment section. And you know, you can call in too. I, I mean, no dis no discrimination over here. I want to hear what you got to hear uh, say as well about what Mario Chama said and about that whole situation. DC Slam, what it is, bro? Man, Dale, man, they live in that chat today. What's up, homie? I'm good, man. What, what, what's good with you? Hey, look, check it out. Uh, first, look, man, I'm not even going to mention the gym man in this. But, <laughs> tell you like this. Scary to me, dog. Most scary. I would be more scared of Kobe than Mike. Okay, I let, right. let, let's hear why. Okay, because... Now, as much as I love Mike, okay, remember, I tell you all the time, Mike is the greatest, Kobe is the best, okay? Okay. I think Kobe will get him on that footwork. So the same thing uh, old boy was saying about Mike, right? I think you can say that about Kobe for real because I think just imagine if both of them two was playing against one-on-one -on -one and it was one shot left, right? Okay. It was, you know, game to 15. I got Kobe better because I think – he can get his shot off on Mike. All right. I think now Mike might have a little bit more athleticism, but I think the chances of the ball going in when the ball go up, I got Kobe on that. I'm not, I, I'm not even going, I told you, I don't even like to compare the other dude to these two. You know what I'm saying? So that's really not even a discussion. If you rank 16th, 17th in the league, you shouldn't even be, uh, you know, in this discussion. But I'm just telling you, that I'm going with Kobe on, like, the scariest thing. That's not me saying he better, all right? Because I'm waiting on you to have that show when you really had that comparison of them two. Because I have seen nobody do this, all right? So you got to have a show to compare these two because they not that far apart as many people I mean, think they are. so it's, it's, it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to go there with a slim because, uh, I mean, even Kobe didn't admit that look man i ain't i ain't i mean mike's to go I ain't nowhere near that man you know he would admit that that was it that was his uh his career was based on him trying to get as good as him because he's seen him as the best thing that the league have seen so he was trying to get his game just as tight right uh and you know and you know what mike said mike said the person that'll beat him is kobe I don't think Mike, Mike said that. I, I, yeah, well, he well, that. yeah, he 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 said it in jest and said that you know uh, he stole all of my moves, man. So I, you yeah, know, exactly. yeah, yeah, he but said you that. Know I got another secret for you that nobody likes to talk about. See, Mike ain't original. Mike is Dr. J, his brother. Because a lot of people don't know Mike. Mike's father said a long time ago that Mike took his game after his brother and the dude he used to play for at North Carolina. All right. So, now, this ain't me taking shots at Mike, okay? Because I know the Mike, it's some, it's some weirdo Mike fans like like it is LeBron fans, right? <laughs> okay? So, it's not me taking a shot at Mike, but I don't want nobody to think that Mike is just completely original, okay? Now, he got some attributes that make him better than Dr. J, and that's the same thing for Kobe, okay? okay. So, if you're going to say that somebody stole your style is exactly just like you, why can't they beat you? I mean, I mean, who, who do you think stole Bruce Lee style and do you think they can beat Bruce Lee? Okay, see, it's not about if I, see, I think we too hung up on if I stole your style. Look, if, you're, if you have a son and you was a carpenter, right? Right. And you only make uh, $2 million in your lifetime and your son come out and make $50 billion. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's standing on he's standing on my shoulders as as a foundation. Yeah, that's how that's supposed to happen. But is is okay. is that is that is that what you're saying is happening in the case of Mike and Kobe? I mean, when you study their games, you you can say I do like uh, Kobe's three point shot a little better than Mike's. Um, it was something Kobe concentrated on more than Mike did, right? So, uh, of course, it probably take, was a little sharper. Would you take Kobe footwork? Would you take Kobe footwork over Mike? I think it's the same. I, I would say they're both A+. Plus. It's kind of hard to Ooh, say which one is better. Like, it, it, they both A+. Plus. If if I'm grading them, I'm giving them both A, a plus for that. Right? Okay, um, what if I told you this? I'll throw this at you. 
Kobe played in the hardest defense of ever. Um, Nobody, yeah, he, he played against a slow ball. Okay, he played against when uh, defense was tough. He played in an era, and and a lot of people go get mad at me when I say this. He played in the best time in the NBA. Yeah, now see, his greatest Jordan was. Right? I think I think it was the. I think it was the uh, the tail end of the best time. I think the best time started in the nineties. It ended in the early two thousands. Best draft is the draft that Kobe and them was in. That's very possible. AI, Ray Allen and them, all of them. Yeah, very possible. That's not an insult to the old school. Uh, what the point I'm making to you is, NBA was getting better and better and better every year. I agree. After that era, okay, that's when uh, the Tin Man and them came through. Okay, there, 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 there is, there is, a, there is a downfall uh, we are currently in right now. It's, it's free falling right now. It's free falling because once again, nobody really that torch. I hate to use that word. Nobody really picked that up. You know what I'm saying? Because if you really like look at the media right now, oh, you don't even see old school players on TV. Yeah, they trying. You know, to, yeah, they trying to sh- transition it. They're, they're, I don't even know if they transition it. I just think don't nobody want no parts of it because you're not seeing good basketball. So that go back to that scary thing again. So and the old and Mike versus Kobe. Mike versus Kobe is really the argument because I think that is a the most legitimate argument you can go on. Like, I've never seen Mike do what Kobe did when he was going through the Colorado trial. That's one up for Kobe. You know what I'm saying? I ain't, I, spurts, it's, some Kobe stuff won't be seen on a stat book. But if we just played eye tests with both of these dudes, and Mike said it himself, you think Kobe would beat him. I ain't going to hold that phone line up, dog. I'm going to fall back and check out the show. All right, Love bro. Y'all, man. Thanks for yeah, the, that thank, chat go hard, man. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for the call, bro. All right, peace. All right. All right, we'll take two more. We'll take two more calls on this topic. Two more, two more calls. Yeah, I mean, he made some good points, man. Uh, Kobe, I mean, Kobe grades out very well uh, when 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 you grade him as a basketball player. So, caller from California, uh, what's your name? Roland Curtis. Somehow. What's going on, big dog? Not much. Yeah, so I, I wanted to give my opinion because um, I, and I always it, it's always kind of tough to hear when people try to separate greatness and who's better because i always believe that the better the better player is going to become the greatest if uh if he has everything you know working together for him correct so yeah so um that's a real good point man that's really a really a real good point yeah because i I feel you know i understand the shack thing but kobe had 12 years after shack to make his case for that's the reason why he left he separated from shack because he wanted to see what he could do by himself and to really put himself against Michael Jordan. So, right. uh, I, I res- yeah, I respect Kobe for doing that, but you know, his, his 12 years post Shaq was nothing like Jordan's 13 years in Chicago. You know, um, there's as far as who, who's more feared. So I, I put in the chat, the, um, the quote from Shaq where he said, the statutes of limitation is up. I was terrified out there. And Charles Barkley said, ask him on the, on TNT, he asked him, "Were you you were afraid of MJ?" He said, "Yeah." Hmm. And uh, and um, and uh, Ernie Ernie Johnson asked him, "Was it just for like the first quarter?" He said, "No, the whole game." Uh, also, I have this quote. It says, "It's uh, the one thing that I think he was unlike any other player I've ever played against is that there was a real fear playing against him. Like people, I've never seen the league be kind of fearful of a player, and that was Steve Nash." And that was Steve Nash after after he retired. So he already played with Kobe. Now, obviously, he played against Kobe when he was in Phoenix. He played with Kobe when he was a Laker. And he still he still says that the only player he ever saw the whole league fear was Michael Jordan. And then I have this one last quote. Kobe, not saying nothing. You have to just switch it up. But I didn't have that fear. You know, Mike would, would you know, you better bring your game. And that was Isaiah Ryder on the difference between Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan. So I think there's, there's there's a lot more NBA players that would tell you that they feared Michael Jordan. Uh, I think people did. I think players did fear Kobe 
Uh, I just haven't seen many quotes and I haven't seen many uh, conversations on it because there are there are videos. Somebody, you know, somebody just dropped a video a week ago about what they meant by uh, fearing Michael Jordan. So somebody said in that video, the guy said it wasn't a, they, they didn't fear Michael Jordan was going to beat him up or anything like that. You know, and he even said that you could argue that the Pistons beat him up. You could argue that uh, you know Reggie Miller went went toe to toe with Michael Jordan. But he just said that the fear that they're talking about is kind of like a, I think like the fear that you talk about in the Bible, you talk about the fear of the Lord is that it's more of like a, a just a high reverence and a high respect. Right. There was probably even, yeah, there was probably even people that were nervous. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, you know what, that, that's always evidence when, when, when you see Mike in the room with these players too, man. Like you remember when he came into the top 75 uh, yep. ceremony and when he walked in and he was announced and it was just that that reverence like uh, all and people are saying they seen the aura and all that stuff i mean that yeah. that that don't that don't happen unless you're looking at the guy that's probably the alpha of your sport and probably the alpha of sports in general so i mean that that don't happen without you being very good i, I know it's a proper it was a propaganda machine behind michael jordan but the propaganda right. machine was very young and still learning how to market uh one guy but michael jordan was the blueprint for that and so most of that was genuine most of it, probably ninety five percent of it, was genuine. But there's there there is a, a a nostalgia about the the Gatorade commercials and all of that stuff, man. So I appreciate the call, bro. Thank you. Okay. All right. Yep. All right. We'll take one more, maybe two more. One more, maybe two more. It was two people that that was trying to call in. I think my boy Jules was trying to call in. It's a lot of comments, man. I can't get to all of them, uh, but I do have this super chat that I have to read. I appreciate that super chat. Um, and it's coming from uh Wiz Man Balling. I picked Kobe. Hold on. There's my boy Jules. Uh, hold on, Jules, real quick. Let me read this super chat. I picked Kobe for the better bag. Kobe do got a bag for sure. And, and especially when it when it comes to his ball handling, pause, his dribbling. Uh, he he definitely have a bag. Um, I chose Jordan for the natural ability to get shots uh off under duress. Uh Kobe didn't have that gift. Oh man, that's tough. Did Kobe not have the gift to get shots off under the rest. I think he, I would say he did. I would say he did. Jules from Shot Town, what's up, bro? What up, man? I'm good. I'm uh, good. Let me correct, buddy. Um, of course, they didn't feel Michael Jordan was going to fight them, but they feared that Michael Jordan was going to light their ass up. Yeah. Vernon yeah. Maxwell, remember, used to play for Houston. He was a defensive specialist. He said it himself. Yeah, Mike was that different dude, man. Like, when we knew we was going to play them, you didn't have a good sleep that night, man. It was like, damn, we got to go up against that dude. You know what I'm saying? And don't get me wrong. I heard your first caller. The problem I had with Kobe is that he got out of the triangle too much and was playing. He played hero ball a lot. Some nights he'd be going, he'd be going good. 12 for 19. You know what I'm saying? 30 points. But then he started getting double, triple team. And he just started going against double and triple teams. That's why he was a below 47% shooter. That's the only reason. His, yeah. ass would, his ass would go ham and think he could just do everything against double and triple teams. You yeah, know what I'm saying? But, because Michael in his Jordan, mind, in, in, in his mind, my bad, I ain't mean to cut you off, but in his mind, what he worked on uh, in the offseason and in the gym, he was so good at he He prepared himself to beat double teams because he knew the double teams was coming. And yeah, it, and I it, get that. Go ahead. I get that, but Michael, 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 that's the reason Michael shot damn near 50% for his career once Jackson got there and ended up almost shooting 50%. Because you never, you, how much clearance did you see him getting his shot? Because he was always in that triangle. And you know, once he got that added muscle on, he didn't have to do much to get motherfuckers off him. Yeah. But let's go back to, let's go back to LeBron. LeBron ain't feared because look at last night. Dylan Brooks gooned his ass up and a, gooned the whole Lakers team up. Yeah. And he don't never do shit, bro. I'm not saying he should go try to knock nobody out, but you know you know how to put a forearm in somebody's neck and push them up off you. You 6'9", 260, goddammit. <laughs> Fuck out of here. Ain't nobody trying to hear that, bro. I hear you, man. I appreciate it. Where, where you been, man? You ain't calling in the show last week, man. Where you been? Oh, shit. Oh, uh, shit. I got a little sick, man. And every time I do catch you, I'll be the Mr. Damn Show. I'll be, seeing the, <laughs> I'll, be seeing, I'll be watching it after the fact. You know what oh, well, good, so, good. As long as you catch it, but, man, that's good. But but the thing about it is, like, I, just the shit that kill me with these cats with LeBron, like, dudes shoot 19% from the mid-range, bro. Like, 
the mid range is open in this new NBA with the free movement. You should be killing from the mid range, my dude. Yeah. You should be on some Demar De- De- Demar Derozan type shit. Yeah, because he killed from the mid range. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, let's go a hell of a lot more points. He got two moves: shoot a three or barrel to the damn uh, to the foul line. And let me throw another stat at you. This was making me think the NBA Reggie. The Lakers have shot 233 more free throws than the rest of the league, but they 20, they 20 something in drives and only like 39%, bro. Yeah. They doing the least drives, but they getting the most fouls, B. Stop very interesting. With me. Yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah, I heard that stat too, man. Thanks for the call, Andrew. That's what's up. All right, bro. All right. Caller from New Jersey. What's up? Hey, peace, 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 my brother. You can hear me? You can yeah, hear me yeah, again? yeah. Peace to you. What's up? Hey, yeah, man. On this um conversation about Kobe and Jordan, man, I don't think I don't think Kobe is better than Jordan. I don't even think he got a better bag than Jordan. Jordan did everything good, and like the last caller said, Kobe used to force a lot of stuff up. Like that's what Kobe. He had a bad stigma on his name. For yeah. forcing shots, the double team. Jordan, like, he was just smooth. Jordan hit it. He hit mid-range. You know, they really weren't shooting a three like that. So that three, if if they were shooting a three, he would have developed a three-point shot, and he would have still been better. And just imagine, he averaged 30-something points just off a two-point field goal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't shooting threes out there. And then you got to look at the score. They was only scoring like ninety points. I'm like, well, you know, sometimes I did see the Bulls score like a hundred, but mainly it was like ninety, around ninety something. And he had a third of 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 the ninety points. So it's it's really it's really no competition. It's Jordan. Um, if you want to throw Kobe in there, because I, I mean. I mean, I throw him in there, but you know, LeBron. I don't think LeBron is. I don't even think LeBron is top top three. I don't even think that. Like, yeah, a lot know, of choked, a lot of people don't think that. I mean, why would he be top three though? See, we looking at look like, that bubble championship was garbage. Um, I still take Kobe two championships without Shaq over the. Four LeBron championships. I take the two Kobe championships without Shaq over the four LeBron championships because the two the two Kobe championships. Who who did he have on the squad? Lamar Odom. Okay, he had Paul Gasol, but he didn't like none of them was real real um, all stars. No, I mean Pal, I think Powell did make all star, but he didn't make one before he joined Kobe. Um, uh, yeah. And 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 if you ranking power fours of all time, I don't think he's gonna be top fifteen at all, right? So, um, exactly. so it, you know, it's not like he had uh, like just amazing players, and 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 Lamar Odom gonna be ranked even lower than Paul Gasol. So, um, yeah, I mean, he did. Yeah, I'm not. I'm. We, I'm not gonna say. I'm not gonna say what the LeBron fans would say and say he carried bombs to the finals. I'm not gonna say that. You know, they they were they were good players in their own right, and sometimes great players. So. Um, and you can't win without uh, some a, a good co-star. And Paul Gasol was a good co-star for him. And they had a good formula of two seven footers down there with Bynum and Paul Gasol, which was good. But yeah, that yeah, that, yeah. that that shows what how good Kobe was as far as advancing his game to the next level because his players that's play, this playing now that can't even play with seven footers in the paint because you know like Luke, Luke right. Luca, which we're gonna talk about in a minute, he can't play with two seven footers in the paint because his offense is predicated on the paint being wide open. In order for him to have a driving lane, you know, but you know, but Luke, I think Luca has the game where he could stop and hit the mid range, uh, even though he has to do it with uh, uh he had to stop and do a, a turnaround fadeaway. He it ain't like he can stop and pull up, you know, because he don't he don't get that much lift on his jump shot like a uh, Michael or Kobe does. So you know, but either either he's got to stop and do a, a a pivot and fade away in the mid range, which is still pretty effective. Um, but it's different from what Kobe and Mike did, a whole lot different. So, yeah, seven footers is – is you, you'll see seven footers come and go for the Mavs, and they, they had Porzingis, and when they found out Porzingis wanted to post up, he had to go. Hey, look, and another thing what the brother said. The brother said that um, Kobe played in the, um, 
the best defensive era now, bro. It was more seven for the Jordan was dunking on on centers, man. Like he just like they jump and he just jump high and, <laughs> and just dunk on them. You know what I'm saying? Um, also, Kobe quit on one of them finals, man. He quit. Yeah, he yeah, quit. yeah. But but hey, but look, I've 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 done that before though. Like I've I I've, <laughs> I've been somebody that got tired of people saying that I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't sharing the ball and I was ball hogging. And I've been the guy who was like, all right, well, well, show me how y'all go do it w- without me ball hogging. I, mm-hmm. I, I I that's what he did. I okay, yeah. He's still a captain of the team, though. I Jordan get it. Would have never made. He would have never made a, um, a statement like that. He would have made a statement a lot of more after they would have won. That's I come agree. on, man. And I agree. I, and I say one more. I say one more other thing, right? A lot of people, I'm not saying like Tim Duncan, like he should be mentioned in in that goat conversation. Like he should really be mentioned in that goat conversation. He, he should he should he be he point. should be mentioned in the top five conversation. I don't think the top five is the goat conversation. I don't think it's a yeah. goat conversation. I think I think it's Mike, and and it's not close. I think Kareem might be second. Kobe is third. And you know, but as as far as the goat is is Mike and is in and, and the conversation is over. As far as top five, Ooh. yeah, Tim Duncan should be in that top five conversation for sure. That's a fact. It ain't no, it's no other goat. And everybody who's arguing Kobe, Kobe, he got mad flaws, man, in his game. And, and I'm not saying like, listen, he Kobe was good. Kobe worked on his game. You know, what I'm saying and that's what I respected. I I, I very. I emphatically disliked the Kobe Bryant when um, he was playing, but after he died, I like—I mean, when well, I say he died, but when he retired, I, I started to like because he started to be more of a philosopher, started to get into like low consciousness. So, you know, I—I I mean, still, I ain't even curse, but I used, you know, I, I started to kind of dig him a little bit as he as he got older. But him and Michael Jordan is like night and day, regardless of him having his moves. Or whatever, Jordan Arsenal moves was crazy, bro. He had the yeah. up and under, yeah. He had to fade away, and, and, and look, bro, up. look, bro, and, and it's something to say about someone who has something in their toolbox that don't have to use it because you, you get what I'm saying. Like that's one of the things I had to learn too. I had some things in my toolbox that I wanted to show you every single time I got on the court. I wanted the court. I want. I wanted. It the, wasn't effective, right? And, well, it, 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 it was, but it was unnecessary. Exactly. Right, but you understand what I'm saying? Coach, oh, yeah. Jordan game. Oh no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead brother. Yeah, right. I mean, but ahead. but when I learned how to play a better style of basketball, I learned that I could still get past this defender with one move. I'm I'm, I'm quick, yeah. and I'm you know I'm deceptive. I can get past you with one move. Why do I need to cross you over? Why tie yourself down? Yeah, basically, it, it, exactly. You know and and and, that, and that's what Michael Jordan. And that's and that's why I hate the term efficiency. When they talk about it in basketball, because they only think efficiency is field goal percentage, but efficiency is also uh, what do you have to do? How much energy do you have to waste to get to a high percentage shot? And for Michael Jordan, there was really a catch and shoot, or a catch with one dribble pull up, or a two dribble pull up, or a catch in the post and a, and a fadeaway. Right? That's that's efficient scoring because I only had to use two to three seconds, or or uh, or two to three dribbles to get a high percentage shot. That's great, and, and that's another thing too. He didn't dribble a lot. No. Now that last shot he made against um, Russell, right? Do you think LeBron in any time in his career can make a shot like that? Um, I mean, yeah, I, yeah, but it, it you I'm but about but a but range shot, not a not a fadeaway three pointer. Um, I th- I think he tried. Yeah, I think he, I mean he tried, but that that's not his that's not his strong suit of his game though. Like when he yeah, was try- well, okay, but so but how you. His, uh, forget, like you said, I was listening to one of your videos and you made a great point. You said the rebounds and assists are minors. Right. Scoring and defense is major. Right. He don't, he can't get to the basket, bro. I see LeBron always get caught and he pick up his dribble. He don't move forward like Jordan used to do. Or even if Jordan pick up his dribble, he's going to hit the jumper. You, I yeah. see LeBron doing fadeaway jumpers. Like it was ridiculous shots, man. That like you know, what I'm saying that he shouldn't even be taking at his skill level. You know, what I'm saying like you can't. He he can't really blow past people like he used to. Only on a fast break. If you know, if you look at LeBron game, he don't blow past people a lot like he used to. And if yeah. he do, sometimes it's the rim he still misses. Sometimes he be missing layups. 
Yeah. So it's like, you know, him and like Joy, man, I'm, he was hitting them up and unders, man. When he did take the high post, you know what I'm saying? He get the ball on the high post. He'd take a couple of dribbles. He'd pump fake to the right. He'd pump fake to the left. Go up under you. He'd lay it up. Or if or if you or if he if he, if you cut his lane off, he gonna fade back and hit that jumper. And yeah. then that was so smooth. He didn't have to. He didn't have to play Superman, even though he was Superman. He didn't have to do what Kobe did, getting double team and jump over everybody and hit a shot. Like he didn't have to do that. Yeah, I mean, and and Kobe, so and like, Kobe was able to master that as well. I think. Um, you know, I I think I I think. Michael Jordan had to figure that out because he was doing it as well. Remember Michael Jordan before Phil got there? He was playing hero ball as well. He was playing point guard f- for about the last 25 games of one of the seasons before Phil got there. And his numbers, Man, his number his, 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 well, hold on, but that. but his numbers were spectacular. He he did that. But he he learned that that wasn't the way. And when you when you yeah. learn that that's not the way, you unlock your teammates' capability as well. We would have never known how good of a point forward Pippen was if Michael Jordan was still playing point guard. Right. So, so coming off the ball is the, the, the first, the first thing that's going to unlock the real potential and your star player and your team. And when Kobe was playing with Shaq, yeah, he went into that triangle willingly, but he was also always trying to prove to people that he's a number one. And, and, and it's hard to do when you're playing beside a guy who the offense goes through and then they say, okay, it's now it's your turn. Like you always in go mode is is your turn. That's, and that's what Luca got Kyrie at right now. Luca is playing. It's all about me basketball. And then at, at some point people say, "All right, Kyrie, your turn. Save us." And and, and that's why I look like Kyrie's jacking shots. So that's why I look like Tim Hardaway Jr. is jacking shots up because that's their only option they can do. When they get the ball, they <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. when they get the ball, they gotta put it up because if they if, if it goes back to Luca, <laughs> they, they, they probably not gonna get it again. So my yeah, my, my point, yeah, but my he point for cutters and, and screen the rules. But go ahead. I'm but my my, ahead. my point is, Kobe was under that go mode under Shaq, and then when she left, and Phil left, now he's trying to prove to the world what he can do. So yeah, he was out there averaging thirty five a game and 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 in go mode again, and then when he realized that he probably couldn't win like that, he was like, all right. I gotta, I gotta make a, I gotta make amends with Phil, and Phil came back, and they mended that up, and then I think that's when he went in master mode, just as uh, Michael Jordan went in master mode. That makes sense. Yeah, but he still was jacking them shots up, man. In year fourteen, year fifteen, man, come on, bro. <laughs> after, after, hold on, after he got his rings. Yeah, yeah. After, Kobe yeah. After, still, after, after he got his rings and Phil left. Days. Yeah, when Phil left, and then he oh. playing with he playing with freaking um uh who who was on this squad at that time? Julius Randle, the man, young boy, Jordan Clarkson. MCs, man. Yeah, bums, yeah. Man. <laughs> no, what he what he what he did is say I got I got two rings without Shaq. I went to three finals, uh, and now we at a spot where I right, uh we tried to bring in Dwight and Steve Nash. It didn't work. I told my Achilles. Now I know I can't really be Kobe no more, but y'all owe me money. So he signed another deal and was like, "Give me money, I do what I need to do to uh, fill them seats in the arena." But we done winning. And it was it was the same two years that that Mike had with the Washington Wizards. He wasn't out there trying to go to the uh the, to the finals. He was out there to teach basketball to them young bucks and get shots up and and fill the seats in the arena. That he wasn't competing no more. So I mean, he he yeah he went back into gunner mode, but he did master the game. Yeah, but them them last couple of years with Jordan, I mean, it was a little bit more smoother. And you know, like I said, man, I, I give Kobe his props because he worked on his game. You know what I'm saying? Um, but as far as like LeBron, like you know, I, I definitely put Kobe over LeBron, even though Kobe ain't yeah. got as many. Um, MVPs as LeBron got there. That's another argument that everybody be saying. Um, but I, let me, I say this real quick before I um, spin, right? I was listening to, um, what's the joke of that be on there with um, Chris Broussard, the white dude with the funny nose? Uh, Nick, Nick um, Wright. Nick Wright. Yeah. And, and they was talking about Kevin Durant um, when Kevin Durant was like, well, why he's not in a GOAT conversation, right? But they was like, well, look, if I had to pick one person, the first person I'm picking is Kevin Durant because he could shoot over anybody 
and his shots is pretty much like effortlessly. Like so, they saying like, no, you Kobe ain't stopping him, Jordan ain't stopping him. The only one who probably might can stop him is Giannis. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, or or could make him or make him like you know like they said he don't look like he forced no shots. Like none of his shots are forced. Like you know if you look at Durant's shots, like all of them, even when he missed them, you be like, yo, that was still a good shot. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It wasn't yeah. nothing forced or nothing. But um. You know, as far as like, you know, pure skill, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, Durant, he play a little defense. I don't, I, I think, you know, I, I think I see a lot of players playing defense. I know a lot of people say that they don't play defense. I don't think they play defense as a whole like they used to. Everybody is not in sync playing defense together, but it's kind of hard now to play defense without that hand checking because. You know, you got to stay in front of somebody. And it's like, it's hard to stay in front of somebody. They can't be going, um, jer- um, um, you know what I'm saying? Hey, hey, right so, so look, you, you, you really, you really taking me into my next topic, to be honest with you. So, so yeah, you, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. you prophet, you prophetic today. And you, you probably gonna have to call back and get yeah, it nope. and, and get that take on nah, that because nah, we I'm about a, to get I'm in there. I'm gonna be tuning in. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna definitely, man, because, you know, I'll be listening, I'll be listening to the um, topics, man. And you got a nice little show, man. I definitely appreciate you, brother. Um, but I'm definitely gonna slide though. But um, peace, peace, peace to the brother, man. And um, I'm gonna definitely shout out to Man Down um, Sports. And I'm out of here, brother. Peace, man. All right, bro. Thank you. Yeah, he he started talking about defense, man, which we got to get into and, and, and with this Luca conversation. So he was actually actually going into my next topic. <clears throat> so I, I I hope he I hope he comment or call back uh, when we get on that, man. But just to wrap it up. Uh, thanks for the super chat from Wiz. Uh, Kobe beat the teams that beat LeBron. Uh, Kobe beat the teams that beat LeBron or, or the teams that LeBron was supposed to beat uh, to match up uh, against Kobe. No GOAT there, and his chips meant more, in my opinion. Yeah, so, so Orlando, Orlando did beat uh, LeBron and was no match for Kobe and the Lakers in the finals. And then uh, when when uh, the Celtics beat him, um, of course, he lost his, you know, Kobe lost to the Celtics one year and then another year that he beat the Celtics. And that was a super team he beat, uh, which, which which is interesting. So, yeah, what 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 the team that was built around LeBron in Cleveland, um, one year they won 66 games, the same year that the Lakers won 65 games. A lot of people thought that we was going to have a, a Cleveland Lakers uh, finals matchup or LeBron Kobe uh, finals matchup. They even had a Nike commercial uh, out, out back then with both of them in it, you know. So it was a lot of uh, a lot of uh, uh, expectations for the for them both to make the finals. But LeBron didn't in, he didn't he didn't he didn't uh, hold up his end of the bargain. Kobe got there, Kobe won. LeBron didn't get there. So I I think it, it, at those times even even back then LeBron was winning MVPs. You know, uh, you know, with Cleveland, I think those MVPs probably was probably was Kobe's, if you want to be real with it. But the NBA was going with the new buck, the 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 young buck, and you know that's what they did. That's what they decided to do, man. Thanks for that super chat, though. All right, so we're gonna move on. Uh, we go we're gonna move on to Luca, man. So uh, Jason Kidd, I don't know if y'all heard this. Jason Kidd was on a local radio station in Dallas after Luca dropped the seventy three, uh, and then I think night before last or last night he dropped 45 in a comeback victory against Orlando and Orlando was kind of on a streak they had just beat Phoenix um uh Phoenix is probably the worst fourth quarter team in the league man they they well, whatever lead they got in the fourth quarter you can you can overcome it uh, so they they gave that up to Orlando and then they come back on the back on the back uh back end of a back to back and they play uh, Dallas and they beat Dallas by 16 points uh, and Dallas went on this crazy run in the third quarter took the lead then Orlando came back in the fourth quarter took the lead then it went back and forth for a while and Dallas was able to pull it out but this is Dallas with a superstar in Luka or or emerging superstar in Luka who some think is an MVP candidate against Orlando with uh, a second year player in Benchero leading them not an MVP candidate not a not a superstar as of yet uh, I think that's interesting. They need so much they need they need 73 to win by five they need 73 from Luka to win by five against uh, the Hawks. Then they needed 45 from him and an explosion and a comeback victory to beat Orlando. 
by two. Uh, that's very telling. But listen to what Jason Kidd said on his radio station. Uh, I, I can't believe he said this. He he really just catapulted Luka Doncic in the uh, in the GOAT debate. Listen to what he said. You can't take this young man for granted. Um, he's better than Dirk. Uh, he's in the in the in the atmosphere of MJ, uh, the best to ever do it, LeBron, uh, Kobe. Um, and so just to appreciate what uh, this young man is doing at the age of 24 is uh, something that Dallas has never seen. And uh, his ultimate goal is to, to, to win a championship, and he will win multiple uh, when it's all said and done. Oh, man. Thanks. Hey, hey, Wiz, thanks for being a uh, member, man. I got you. Hey, uh, just for anybody who want to be a member, uh, we are going to start doing once once we get more than uh, 10 members, we're going to start cycling y'all in uh, for a full panel. Like we do our, our full panel on Fridays. So it's uh, five of us on Fridays. And we go always save that six spot for a member to uh, join if they want to uh, uh, to join the conversation and do a full episode with us, man. So um yeah that's that's what we're gonna be giving our members so um y'all keep that in mind thanks um so ah did y'all hear that he he is saying that luca is a special player which i agree uh he's saying that we don't want to take him for granted which i agree he is a great he's, he's a great player like you know let's 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 celebrate this guy but then to come out and say He's already he's first of all, he said he's better than Dirk. Which I disagree with. I don't think he's better than Dirk. And neither does Tony Parker. I wish I would have got that sound bite when Tony Parker, I'll put the link in the description. But uh du Dwayne Wade has a podcast and he his first episode, he had Tony Parker, Pogasau, Dirk on uh, the whiskey on the episode, and they talked about Luca. And Dirk said that Luca was better than him and Tony Parker cut him off and was like, no, Luca is not better than you. He's not better than Dirk. I'm sorry. Right. And I agree, you know, can you win something? And because that shows, you know, the, the numbers is what it is. If, if, if Dirk wanted to go out and get numbers like Luca, he could have, but the reason why people don't go out and get those numbers is because it reduces your chances of winning when you're, when your best player is going to go get those numbers like that. Like, that's not the best formula for winning. Harden showed us that. Jordan showed us that, right? LeBron showed us that. Going to go get those triple-double numbers and controlling the entire game as the point guard and the primary scorer and doing all that stuff and 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 making turning your uh, players into catch-and-shoot players, uh, that's, a, that's a hard formula to win by. LeBron found that out in Cleveland, and that's why he ran to Miami and formed the super team. Now, if... If you form a super team, you almost got two things going on. You got your best player running this Luka system or Harden system or LeBron system. And then you got uh, a whole nother uh, team, right? Like, because if you take LeBron off of Miami and it's, if, it's Wade, Bosh, and Ray Allen, Rashard Lewis, Mike Miller, that's still a good squad that's, that's a contender without LeBron. So what LeBron did with Miami is saying, I, I still want to play the way I want to play. I still want to play brown ball. I still want to get those numbers close to a triple double. But if I get players so good around me, they can play up. They, they can win the game for me. I get the numbers. Like I get the numbers, but I got a whole separate team over here with Wade and Bosch. Like that is a squad. That's a, that is a, a superstar with a co-star by itself without LeBron Wade and Bosch is a superstar and co-star with a hall of fame role player coming off the bench in Ray Allen. Right. So you got a whole, contending championship squad without LeBron, then you add LeBron. I get to play Brown ball. Y'all, y'all get the win. Right. And that's what Luca is doing. He's playing Luca ball and he's trying to put a team around him. They're saying, all right, I can play, get these numbers. Y'all figure out how to get the win. Right. Here's how Tim Lettler responded to that. Listen, he took it too far. 
Let's, let's, just, let's just be honest about it. He went too far. I didn't even have a problem when he said he's better than Dirk because from a skill set standpoint, he is better than Dirk because of his ability to handle the basketball and create for other people. And he scores at the same rate Dirk did or better than Dirk did even. So I'm okay with that. He should have left it there and said he aspires to be one day mentioned with the likes of a LeBron James, a Kobe Bryant, and a Michael Jordan. That's a perfectly fine statement. When you throw him in there now with three guys that won 15 rings collectively, <laughs> and you haven't even been to the finals yet. And here's the biggest point for me. All three of those guys that stretches in their career were, were candidates for defensive player of the year. Certainly first team all league type defenders laid it on the line and affected the game on that end as well. So I just think JK went too far and there is no way Jason Kidd makes that statement if he's not his head coach. Like if Jason Kidd just watching Luca, he's not saying that about Luca. Do you agree? Come on. You preach it. <laughs> And, and yeah, he is saying it because he's his head coach and he's promoting him. And it's his job to do that because it's what Mark Cuban wants to do. Like even them running this uh this this offense, J Kid know that, that offense is a dead end. He didn't he didn't have he didn't even let the Lakers do that with LeBron when he was the assistant coach over there with uh Frank Vogel. That's not the offense that you want if you want to win. But I I, I think Cuban has sat uh Jason Kidd and uh Kyrie Irving down and was like, I'm we're gonna pay you this money. Like, Kyrie, you couldn't get your max contract nowhere else. We're going to give you that max contract. Jason Kidd, we're going to give you this uh, opportunity to coach a great, right? Rick Carlisle didn't want to do it because Rick Carlisle probably wanted to run a, a different offense, and Mark Cuban wasn't letting him do it. So he left. And look what he's doing with Indiana right now and, and, and Tyler Har Holly Burton, who a lot of people think is not even as good as Luca. So ima Im imagine Rick Carlisle going over there and implementing that and, and, and being successful. Right. So he ran from Luca. I can't I can't do it. He resigned. They bring in kid. I think they were sat down and said, look, this is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to market this this superstar. I'm trying to make him the face of the NBA. That's going to bring more money to Dallas uh, uh, and, and the Mavs. I make more money. We got this uh, face of the league. It can turn into uh, to rings at some point, because at some point when you're the face of the NBA, the NBA has to uh, uh, facilitate. Your success. They have to help you succeed. That's their business model. We get a face of the league. We're going to facilitate that. All the ESPN shows, the Fox Sports, all the all the people, they're going to say what uh what is best for this uh, uh for this player as far as oh, he's an all-time great, he's MJ, he's that that they're gonna say all of these things. So we got everything set up just like we did it for LeBron. We're saying he's the next Mike, we're gonna take all his competition out of the way. You uh you know so many bad things about Kevin Durant who was his competition actively, he can't even be in the conversation because the media has slandered his name. Kobe Bryant has been taken off his pedestal, so he has a, a direct uh link to Michael Jordan in the in the, in the goat debate. Like there's a business model for the NBA and ESPN and the, and sports media to make the NBA's face of the league the the talk of the town, right? So that's what they're doing with Luca. And they just got to make sure they got people that are just okay with it. Kyrie Irving has just got to accept the fact, okay, you gave me this money. I go in the corner and stand in the corner and just and just watch Luca do his thing and, and let y'all market him. That's what's going on, right? So, but I'm glad, I'm glad that uh Tim Legler said, man, but this is nonsense. He's he uh Rick Buecher and Tim Legler are the only guys that really talk uh uh common sense and, and real honest they're not going with the program they're not going with the program of, of of how everybody else is moving but most people they know that they gotta go with the program and Luca is the next program they've been trying to give him the MVP for the last four years and he can't get it because they can't win games like it, it, it's nothing it, it, I did an episode when Jason Kidd was talking about what their plans was for the season and this man uttered the words of uh, the MVP is a real possibility for Luca, and he said, "All we got to do is sprinkle some wins in there." This this is the coach that said, "Sprinkle." This is exact words. If we can sprinkle some wins in there, then the MVP is a possibility. He want him to get the numbers first and foremost, and if we can get, just sprinkle some win and get enough, we ain't even got to be number one, number two, or number three, or number four. If we can sprinkle some wins in there and get maybe the fifth or the sixth seed, then his numbers should just have him as the MVP. That that that's what the head coach said. That lets me know what's really going on. The prior the priority for the Dallas Mavericks and 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 Mark Cuban is uh, Lucas MVP hopes. 
That's the priority list. We want Luka to win MVP. We want Luka to get his stats. We want to have this great offensive rating. And winning is uh, somewhere at the bottom of the list. Defense is definitely not part of the list. It's definitely not. And I'm glad that Tim Lugler said, can you compare him to Michael Jordan, Kobe, and LeBron? And in Michael Jordan and Kobe's case, these dudes are nine, ten-time all-defensive players. That means on the defensive end, they were the Michael Jordan of the defense. And on the offensive end, they was the Michael Jordan of the offense. We're, we're saying that Luka is the Michael Jordan on the stats, not the offense, because on offense – you have, to, you have to upgrade and graduate your game to being able to play off the ball. The first thing we learn on the playground is how to score with the ball in our hand, right? So all the good players can do that, middle school, high school, and when you get to college, you're going to get around other players that was just as good as you with the ball in their hand. But what's going to separate you is what off-the-ball skills do you have? Can you catch and shoot? Can you come off screens and shoot? Can you come off a, a pin down and shoot? Can you come off a curl action? Uh, do you move without the ball? Can you slash? Can you uh, post up? Uh, uh, can you run the floor? Can 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 you be utilized in the backdoor uh, uh, situation and, and, and catch a backdoor screen in the offense? Or can you catch an alley, alley-oop? Can you do all of these things off ball? That's going to be a next level of your game. And in Luca's case, I think he can. He's good enough to be a great post player. But he's so in love with being a point guard because it's a it's it's a drug that a lot of people just can't get rid of, of being in control of everything, having the option to take a shot whenever you want it or pass the shot up for your assist. Like so it I'm in a situation where either I'm gonna come down and get off a shot that I like, or I'm gonna get an assist when I give it up to someone who better take the shot when I give it to him. So for four straight quarters of the game, I'm either I'm coming down court. I'm either going to get an assist or a shot that I like, or I'm going to go rest uh, and take a playoff and let, and let Kyrie do something for one or two plays. That's what he's doing for four quarters. I'm either going to get the assist or I'm either going to get the point. That's a powerful drug. And then on defense, you can say, well, on defense, I don't have to do anything. Because I'm doing everything on offense, so I can take the least uh, uh, or, or, the, or, the, or the easiest matchup on defense. I can go stand in the corner, and then I can pad my rebound stats. That's a that's, that, that's a no-no for me. I can't compare that to Mike, Kobe, or LeBron. I can't even care to compare it to LeBron, even though that's LeBron's system, but at least LeBron was playing defense in Miami. I, I have documented evidence of, of, of LeBron James playing Really, really good to great defense. His first stint in Cleveland and in Miami. Pat Riley won't have a, a star not playing defense. So he had to play defense in Miami. I have almost 10 years of LeBron playing great defense, but I also have about 10 years of LeBron playing whack defense and playing Luka Doncic's defense as well. That's what separates LeBron from Kobe and Mike. But what separates LeBron, Mike, and Kobe from Luka is I do have at least 10 years of them playing lockdown defense. I have zero years of, of Luka playing any defense. Forget lockdown, just defense in general, he's not playing, right? So um, last uh, last uh, thing I'll play for you is uh, Cheryl Swoops, who was called the Michael Jordan of the WNBA. And this is the girl who won three straight, four straight with the uh, Houston uh, comments with Cynthia Cooper. And, I mean, Cheryl Swoops was the – she was that dude. I'm sorry, not that dude. She was that, she was that girl. <laughs> Cheryl was that girl, man. And um, she was on Gills Arena podcast um, today, and they talked about it. All of that, but I still go back to his point. And maybe it's because I'm just I, just a little different when it comes to defense. I know you're like you're pride ain't gonna stop me. I don't disagree. I don't agree with that. Because I was, I was just that player that was like, listen, to his point, you got to study the game. You got to study your opponents, know what they like to do, where even Luca, Luca has a weakness. What is it? If you, if you're not watching film and you're not studying, you don't know that. Mm -hmm. But for me, it was all about, okay, this is who my matchup is going to be primarily tonight. I know what she does well. I know what she can't do. This is how I'm going to guard her. And after 
somebody gave me 20 points. I'm like, you know what? Nah. Because my pride won't let me live with somebody giving me 50. So what are you going to do? I'm going to make sure you don't get 21. <laughs> Yeah. But my thing is, like, even, even you, you got six fouls, use them. Yeah. Yeah. So instead of him but having that, that's, that's, that's why they're shooting 20 free throws, also. But I, I, yeah, yeah. I, there has to be there has to be a point where somebody says, I, I think right now the game has gotten to a point where we rely, guys rely so much on help. Help, help, help. So when, when are you going to have enough pride to get in front of your man and guard him one on one? Yeah, he's doing the same moves. That, 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 that's, no doubt. That, that's but that's the that's the that's the. He ain't that quick. But that's I'm not, the, I'm not but saying it wasn't saying, a great delusion. performance because it was yeah, a great absolutely, performance. Absolutely, it was a hell of a performance. But but <laughs> it's dilute. But I'm, what I'm saying is, it's dilute. And you're making way too much money to not saying, have pride to guard somebody. Back yeah. in what well, back in the '90s, what was the offense compared to the defense? What what 55, 45? Right, defense kind of right. You you had more defensive players than you did. You had offensive players back when it started. Yeah, right, I mean, more I mean, offensive players started coming in. So, what changed in the defense of concepts since it was created? Nothing. Yeah. Right, below the free throw line, we're gonna push you over the pick and roll. We got to say it's the same concepts we went through. Is the same, but the only thing that's changed is the move. There's a hundred more moves that these guys have versus then, <laughs> but it's the same concepts of defense. So the defense of strategies has not evolved. So you still have the same, back then it was, you have a rock offense, I have a pistol. Yeah, I'm gonna keep beating you in this war. Then you got a pistol, kind of even. Now you got a, a bazooka. Like the, the, the defense is not equipped. They have the same concept. But load the free throw line, we're going to do this. Pick and roll, we're going to... I mean, the only thing that came up now is switch. So uh, <clears throat> I'm going to address the Gilbert part first, and I don't agree with him. And Gilbert is part of uh, of this new movement um, that it seems like that most players get into when they become part of the media, uh, where they have to... You know, you don't... I mean, it's a very hard thing to do to to to, to be part of the media and go against the brand that you're covering, which is the NBA. So if the NBA is going in this direction, you don't want to be the person in the media that's going in this direction because the NBA would never, uh, they would never help you out. Like Gil would never get on ESPN talking against the NBA. JJ Reddit would never get on ESPN talking against the NBA. It's special, it's special people that, that, you know, that they'll use to be the voice against, the the norm like you know it the the norm was a hey, we're going in the direction with LeBron but we'll have a few people like Skip Bayless that's kind of against LeBron because it helps us that helps us bring in someone like Shannon Sharp or Nick Wright if if Skip didn't exist there would be no need for uh Nick Wright Shannon Sharp to be on the LeBron hype train so you gotta have one or two of those guys but it's not a lot of guys that 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 are getting um that that are uh, getting a lot of airtime saying anything about this era of basketball and the truth about uh how it's declining and it's it, it's it's just a it's just not as good as the 90s and 2000s right so uh Gilbert will never he, he's always gonna him and JJ Reddick and some other guys they're always gonna talk like this era is just so much better and the reason why we're seeing so many points is because the players are so skilled now which is not really that true the players are skilled but you you have a uh, you have <laughs> you have a league now. All right, let's talk about the league in the nineties and two thousands. You have Patrick Ewan, Shaq, David Robinson, Avila Sabonis, Yao Ming, Dwight Howard, Lonzo Mourning, uh, Charles Oakley's down low. You got all these bigs, Rich Smith. You got all these big dudes that's down low. And the way the defenses were is we don't care how good you are. We're not going to let you get layups that often. And if you do get down there and get a layup, our seven footer is going to make you pay. Either he's going to come clean the uh, uh, shot with a, with a, with a block, or you go you go get you go get knocked down when you coming in the, in the paint. That was the job of the seven footer or the bruiser that was playing power forward, PJ Brown, all those guys, right? That's their job. Make them pay when they come down there. The NBA has transitioned into 
you know, making rules like defensive three seconds in the key to make sure that that seven footer can't camp that can't camp out in the uh, in the paint. Sorry, that's the first thing to kind of make the uh, paint wide open. But the the second thing that happened is now in a space and pace uh, NBA, um, we're not even having seven footers even on the floor that much. Like a DeAndre Drummond can't even get on the floor. DeAndre uh, Jordan can't even get on the floor. DeMarcus Cousins, Dwight Howard can't even get a job, right? You look at Golden State, they'll play, they'll start loaning for the rebounds, but then as soon as halfway through the first quarter come, they start, they got Draymond Green at center, and they got a lineup of Draymond Green, Wiggins at the power forward, Kaminga at the three, Clay and Steph, and they're running with that, right? So now you have, you have an offense where you got five people at the three-point line. Now what can I do with a seven-footer? If he can't stand in the paint, and they got all their people at the three-point line. Now I have to put in a center that can go out there and guard at the perimeter. So what is the paint doing now? It's wide open. And that's the offense. Spread the floor wide open. Give my best player the ball. Everybody stay out of his way and let him beat his man to the rim. And hopefully whoever my shot blocker is can rotate and possibly get a shot. But a lot of times that shot blocker is not really a shot blocker. It's somebody like, uh, I don't know, Kevin Durant rotating and getting blocked, which he, he is a good block shot blocker. He's he's a true, legit 6'11", 7 foot, right? So he's getting a lot of blocks at the rim, but he's rotating from the three-point line. <laughs> so it's, it's a race. Can, can my best player get from the top of the key to the rim before Kevin Durant can get from the three-point line to the rim and challenge his shot? So th that's why it's hard to defend these guys because now you're, you're, you're making everyone play one-on-one -on -one basketball with all this space and it's just a straight line from the, from the three point line to the rim with nobody in between. Now in Kobe's and Mike's uh, era, uh, like I said, Kobe was playing with two seven footers. So he had uh, Bynum and Paul Gasol and neither one of them was three point shooters. So you're going to have at least two of those guys on the block. Right. So it, it, Kobe Bryant had to develop more skills he can't get all the way to the rim every single time. Sometimes when he make his move, he got to stop mid-range and pull up. Right? Or he got to do some work off the ball to let those seven-footers screen for him to get a catch and shoot like Reggie Miller used to do. He had Dale Davis and Rich Mix. They would set double screens for him. He would run off them screens, catch and shoot three, catch and shoot mid-range, whatever the case may be. That's what those seven-footers were for. Set those screens. You got someone like... uh. Uh, uh, Steph Garden, uh, Reggie Miller. Oh man, Reggie Miller uh, run Steph through all those screens by the second quarter. Steph won't want to guard Reggie Miller no more. But we're we're missing that part of the uh, uh, uh basketball. So, um, yeah. So they they talked about Luca. I, I I don't understand what Jay Kidd is is trying to get at with promoting this guy and putting him in a conversation with Kobe, uh, uh, uh MJ and LeBron. I I don't agree. Tim Le Ted, Tim Legler don't agree. Don't sound like Cheryl Swoops agree either. Um, but uh, we'll let y'all weigh in and let y'all. Uh, we had we had one guy that was calling in. You can call back. Uh, I'll put the number on the screen. Y'all call in. Let me know what y'all think about this topic, man. I think it's interesting. Um, but we about to see a whole big push. This man might get back in the MVP conversation, even with his team being a seven eight seed. He might be the first seven to eight seed to win the MVP this year. It's it's a it's a huge push for this guy now. Jules, what's up, big dog? I was waiting for this, man. Look, <laughs> Gilbert Arenas is trash. Okay. Um, who was the other dude, the other player that Can't, she was talking about that the uh, JJ Reddick. Yeah, JJ Reddick. Trash, yeah. bro. You can't critique the new NBA, and that's the problem with today's sports commentators. They would they would critique the league back in the day. You know what I'm saying? And think about it. He talking about Gilbert Arenas talking about the, the the defense. It just ain't changed. Wasn't no zone when Jordan and them was playing, fool. And yeah. you had offensive three seconds where your center or anybody couldn't camp in the lane without the ball for more than three seconds. And the fouls that are flagrant fouls now was a common ass foul back in the day. So miss me with that. But here's the thing about Luca. He came into the league at 18. 
just like LeBron did. Right. And if you look at their numbers, he doing better numbers than LeBron. But you know what he got? The same thing LeBron had after six years? Nowhere near a chip. And he'll never get a chip. If you let Kyrie be the motherfucking point guard and let Doncic be the six seven wing with his fat ass that he's supposed to be, they would win because Kyrie is a floor general. And yeah. he ain't going to hog the ball like that. Yeah. I agree with you. You know what I'm saying? I agree with Come you. Come on, man. He's a natural small it's, forward, man. He's a, he's a small that's forward. That's what I'm saying, bro. He, his, his model, the way he should model his game, of course, he's probably better than this guy, but he should model his game the way uh, Paul Pierce did. He played small that's forward. What I'm saying, bro. Let somebody come in and play a real point guard, get you a real two guard. Yeah. That way, the Dallas Mavericks can stop doing all this uh, all this crap, man. Like Jason Kidd was just on record uh, after the loss to Phoenix, I think in the post game saying that we got to do a better job of protecting Luca on defense. I've never heard I've never heard He's someone say this about someone is in a in a top 5 conversation or MVP conversation. We got to protect him on defense. Let me tell you something, dog. Kobe and Jordan, I think one other person is time for the most first team all defense all time. Nine of them. Jordan is one of the few dudes that did it back to back where he got 200 steals and 100 blocks in the season for a guard. Okay. Yeah. And he, 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 he won the steals titles three times. LeBron been playing, been, been playing for 21 years. Guess how many, he's still about 500 steals behind Jordan in his career, bro. Mm. Okay. So anybody talking that shit that he on that level, you will never get on that level. If you ain't playing some type of defense, my boy. Some type of defense. Yeah, you yeah, yeah, you gotta be playing some high level defense, man. Nah, to, to to be in that conversation with Kobe and uh Mike, you gotta be playing some high level defense. Um, not just yeah. offense, man. You know how much easy it is to to do all this when you got the ball the whole game and you're not mm-hmm. even required to play defense and we're we're protecting you on defense, we're hiding you on defense. And the thing about that is that's some boring ass shit, dog. It was games. I couldn't even watch the Houston Rockets, man. I got tired of James Harden. Oh, man. man. My, my nigga, I couldn't do it, bro. Oh, man. I couldn't do it. And you know, that was saying this stuff about James years ago. Talking about, oh, man, he, his season was just as good as Michael Jordan's season statistically. No, no I wasn't. No, no, no. I'm going to tell you why I wasn't. Because the percentage of threes he was shooting. When Jordan averaged 37.1 points a game, he was averaging less than one three a game. Brother was doing it on twos. That's impressive. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, yeah. stop playing with me and playing defense. How much defense do we really see Harden play? Uh, none. How much defense do Harden play? None. And like you said, LeBron. And I saw somebody in your comments talking about, oh, well, when LeBron came back to Cleveland, he wasn't playing no defense because Pat was pushing him too hard. Miss me with that, bro. Okay, stop it. Mm. He's supposed to be this genetic freak of nature. It yeah. shouldn't have been a problem. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Come on, man. You and- know. And, and don't get me wrong, I like Luca. I just think if they went to a traditional set, you know what I'm saying, and put Kyrie at the point, who's a better sidekick? Any night, Kyrie can get you get your thirty and twelve fucking assists. Yeah, and and, when, and and when you got a co-star, were you telling him, look, we know you can be a, a number one scorer, but Luca is our number one scorer. At least tell that co-star, but you know what? But the second most important role on the team, the facilitator, we can let you get that, and then you can get For your real? point. But they, but they telling Kyrie, look, we giving Luca the the first most important uh, role in the offense exactly. and the second most important role, and exactly. and the third most important role because no one can post up except Luca. So he's the post player. Well, that's the thing. He's the this point guard, the facilitator, great. and the primary scorer. So what that leaves Kyrie. Yeah, his post game, his post game ain't that great. I'll be honest with you, he got itches on Kyrie. But if they play one on one, I'll take I'll take Kyrie offensive package all day. Yeah, for sure. He, but Luca got the size though. Luca got the size. I I would rather have size, I would rather have the bigger guy be my primary scorer. I would rather have the real point guard uh, be my point guard. And I would tell Luca, look, you got to sacrifice those assists. You, you're not going to get nine, mm-hmm. ten assists. A game, right. you might you might be getting four or five. You got to sacrifice that, right? I would, saying, I, I would rather you put that energy on defense, and I would rather you play That's off the ball. That way, I can get a plus game from you and Kyrie at the same time. Right. And that's what I'm saying. I didn't see shit where they was talking about in the locker room, like did like motherfuckers are like, man, I can't play with this motherfucker, dog. All he do is pound the ball. 
they gonna have issues. And you know, Kyrie is a different motherfucker. He's chilling right now. He eventually gonna have a problem with that shit, bro. Like you said earlier, shit, Luca pound the ball so much when Kyrie get the ball, he just shoot the bitch. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Either he either he doing you don't, that. You ain't because, gonna get a chance. Yeah, and, and if you and if you don't and y'all lose and you ain't got the numbers, they're gonna say that you wasn't helping them. Oh, one other thing. Like I said, um, Gilbert Arenas and J.J. Reddick trash. You know why? Because they are doing this to the NBA. They never critique it. They never try to tell them to take it to a better place. And guess what happened the other night? When number one South Carolina on the female college basketball played number seven LSU, they got better numbers than the Celtics versus the Heat. Wow. Better numbers, bro. Wow. A lot of people don't know that. But that's how bad the NBA getting, G. You see how bad it was on on on, on Christmas, and 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 before, you know, NFL was ruling Christmas before Jordan. Nineteen ninety was the first time they started having NBA on Christmas when Jordan was getting ready to win that first chip. They ruled. Then what happened last year? And then I mean, you know, Christmas before, and then this Christmas had just passed. NFL devoured their ass. Sure did. The NBA is going down, bro. And I hate to say it. I blame it on motherfuckers like LeBron, dude. They done changed the game to this pound, 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 and everybody playing one-on-one. Ain't no real defense. I mean, oh, my God, if they brought hand checking back, it would make it a more difficult game. It would have to make dudes get in the lab and make their skills better. I wish they'd bring the hand checking back. Yeah, not just not not just hand checking. Take away that daggone uh, defensive three key because you're making the yeah. whole center position obsolete. Oh, you're talking about the defensive three seconds? Yeah. yeah. Right. See, they flipped it from what it was back in the day. And back in the day, it was, you know, you know three-second call for the offensive play. You can't be in a three-second call without the ball. But then they flipped it on the defense like, really, bro? It's, yeah. It, it, man, I don't know, man. Like I said, I don't really watch the NBA until the playoffs. And it's been – it's been since the last time I saw Kobe in an all-star game that I watched the all-star game. Yeah. Okay. Ain't no pride left. It's the East against the West. Y'all are supposed to be going at each other. I ain't never seen a non-competitive in uh, major league baseball all-star game. And back in the day, they really took that shit serious. I remember when Pete Rose won the world series on the winning run coming home and he broke the motherfucking catch his shoulder because he ran into him. Mm. They play because of the pride. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no pride no more in basketball, bro. It's garbage. Yeah. All right, man. I thanks miss, for I, thanks for the I call, miss, though. I gotta I gotta clear this phone line. Go ahead. Last thing. Oh, I miss, I see I see that comment there. I miss Ben Wallace too, because that was one defensive motherfucker. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and with, who also right, played bro, with LeBron, you. and they couldn't even use him. But yeah, thanks, man. Appreciate right. the call. Man down sports, y'all. Check them out. Thanks, bro. All right, bro. All right, let's get let's get one or two more quick ones real quick before we move on. Uh, I mean, I mean, we still go eat on this NBA and this defense and this Luka because it's other people that have some things to say as well. Um, but let, let's go ahead and get these phone calls in. I, I'll take two two more possibly before we move. Who they get a bag too early to? Kyrie? Yeah, I remember that All-Star game too. Uh... It was. It wasn't just Iverson. It was Marbury. Uh, Marbury hit some big shots and kind of went back and forth. It, I, it was. It was Iverson and Marbury going back and forth with Kobe. It was Kobe by himself, and Marbury and Iverson both was hitting uh, big shots for the East. One of the best All Star games I remember watching. Man, uh, All Star games that Kobe was involved with was 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 real All Star games. Man, those things was legit for sure. But yeah, it's, it's about the marketing and the money. Yeah, so um, someone else said something about this, and this is this is an old. All right, so let's uh, we got a, we got a we got a caller coming in. Caller from Alabama. Hello? What's up? What's your name? Oh, what's up, man? Down. Um, I see you were talking about the defense and yeah. why it's uh, a little more difficult to play defense nowadays. Um. One thing you overlook, I think it's a lot harder to play defense, especially man to man nowadays, is because of how loosely they officiate, like the carrying rule. Yeah. Like, for Let's just say 10 years ago, a hezzy, it, it might get you, it's like a 50% chance it'll get you. 
But now with today, the way people can heavy the ball and put their hand under the ball yeah. and manipulate the ball is just practically unguardable. That's because a real good point. It's like, it's like if you're going to guard a person, they pick the ball up, which would be called a carry, and then they just can manipulate the ball and just go. So it's too difficult. So now you got to rely on your health defenders. And let's be honest, but like you said, there's no real centers in the league. So that's basically a bucket. Yeah, that's a good point. And I, I, I want y'all to pay attention to what he just said. And when y'all watch uh, the Mavs play, Luca does that a hundred percent of the time just before he uses the screen. So he'll come to the top of the key. When the screen comes, that's that's how he starts off his his dribble by carrying the ball. He gets his hand all the way under the ball and 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 does almost like a little hop a uh, 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 like a hop step before he uh, start. You know you know and he does that. And the reason why he does that is because if you if you j- uh, jump the screen, he can easily. Uh, cross over to the other side, right? But if he had to be more honest and have his hand on top of that ball, uh, that option wouldn't be there just as easy, right? So he d- he does it every single time he uses a screen. Trust me, I've been I've been watching his game for for the last four years. He does it every single time, and it's a carry. And I remember I remember when when Ray for Austin first got to the league after he got famous with and one mixtape and all that stuff, and uh, he was playing for. Oh, was, right. It might have been Orlando or Houston. I can't remember which one he went to first, Orlando or Houston. He was with one of those teams. And uh, it was a blowout game, and he got in in the fourth quarter to, f- to finish the last five minutes, and the crowd stood up that was ready for him. And he got the ball and was walking the ball up court through his legs, and the crowd knew something was coming. And just walking the ball up court, the referee called travel. And the reason why I think they did that is because – I think David Stern had already let the referees know, man, we're not, we're not, we're not doing no and one mitts tape stuff on in my NBA. So if y'all see him trying to do it, I want y'all to regulate it. And they called travel yeah. on that man for going through his legs and creeping up. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like you would do on a playground. He didn't do nothing real fancy. He was just creeping up, you know, doing his thing. And they called travel. I said, you got to be kidding me, man. But I knew, I knew, even at that age, I knew that was a, that was, David Stern and the referees sending the message that we're not allowing it, right? So that's how serious they was about it. And you know what they did with Iverson and his crossover? They banned that for carrying oh, as well. Bro, they called him before he even went and took initiated the move. As soon as it looked like he was about to do it, bro. Yeah, yeah, yep. So, but another thing I also want to talk about is the hand checking thing. I don't think it should be, you know, OZ hand check. Where is this thing? I think, um. And we'll go on to the hand set. I think it should be more of the arm bar variation. Um, because I remember um I remember when Kobe was playing the Pistons, right? And a lot of people didn't pick up on it. But the reason one of the reasons Kobe shot so poorly in that Pistons series was because of the Pistons, what they were doing, not only were they doing the arm bar hand checking, but what they will also do is every single time Kobe got past his man. And Ben Wallace was on the the weaker side. One of the players would bump up against Kobe, and it would kind of shift his momentum. And when he rerouted back, that was enough time for Ben Wallace to come up on the weaker side, cut the hell out of his shot. Mm. So I just so that's why I think that the arm bar variation could, should come back. I don't think the OG just you know hand on the hip, pushing away stuff can come back. But I think with the arm bar, it should bring that back. I think, again, I think they need to get rid of the defensive three seconds in the key because, let's be honest, there's no real centers and it needs to stop the offense. But I was, again, that that whole carrying bull crap with the whole quote-unquote heavy stuff, nah, they, they got to kill that, man. Yeah. Just, 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 just regulate the rules, man. Like, the rules are already there. Exactly. They're, they're, they're just allowing certain things because they know – they have to make they have to put an entertaining product on, on the floor. And they think that I think they underestimated how many people really like basketball more than they like entertainment. You know, they yeah, it's a whole lot of fans that's around the NBA that's just there for the entertainment, that just want to see uh scores and points. But it's a lot of purists and a lot of real basketball fans is like, nah, I want to see real basketball. 
And, and, if, and if that means we got to see low scoring, then so be it, because that's how much we like basketball. And they underestimated how much of us is still watching. So uh, appreciate the call, but, bro. But here's the thing. Yeah, yeah go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, well, well, again, with that little marketing towards like the casuals, the thing about that is that the casuals aren't, they're watching highlights. They're not watching the full game. They're not really going out buying the merchandise. I remember when the game was actually good, bro. Even teams I didn't even root for, man. I had about four or five jerseys. I had the hats, I had the caps, I had the jackets, I had everything. The people that they're marketing two nine days aren't people that are going to buy your gear. And most of the people that you are marketing to, they they couldn't buy your gear to begin with because most of them are young. Mm. So, of course, you're going to have this whole deficit in, you know, your profits and stuff like that. But It'll, it'll eventually catch up to him. They call it to him in the 70s. It'll catch up to him again. But that's all I wanted to say, man. I ain't going to hold you up. All right, bro. Thanks for the call, man. Good call. I right, no problem. Yep. Yeah, man. Uh, that, yeah, it was a good point, man. Hand checking, um, allowing real defense, you know, taking away that de- uh, defensive three in the key. You know, all those things are going to help. Um, but there was another player that said something about it, man. Scalabrini was on – was on uh, Kevin Garnett's podcast. I think it was, was last year, maybe a little bit more than last year. Um, but uh, he said something very interesting because not not only do we have to look at the fact that the league isn't allowing real defense anymore, so now we have to look at 30 points different than what we looked at 30 points before. Like, you know, 30 points that Kobe got, 30 points that Michael got, those 30 points was against elite real defense that they allowed to happen right versus the 30 points against defense that they're legislating out of the game like we're not even going to allow this player to be stopped that 30 points is totally different right so this 35 that that luca is averaging this 34 that luca is averaging is not the same as the 34 that kobe averaged the the 35 that uh, james harden averaged is not the same as the 35 that kobe and michael average it's just not but on the flip side you got to look at how much uh, energy was expended on the defensive end for Kobe and Mike as well. Because remember, they were the Michael Jordan on offense and the Michael Jordan on defense, right? Uh, Luca is not the Michael Jordan on defense. He's not even close to it, right? So um, imagine the energy of getting 35 points and then turning around and being one of the best uh, defenders in the league at the same time. Just ima- imagine that. Who's the best defender in the league now, perimeter-wise? At one point, it used to be Kawhi, right? But uh, who who just who was the last person to get defensive player of the year? Maybe Marcus Smart. Or, or you take a Drew Holiday, he's known for his defense. Or Jimmy Butler. You know, you take players like that who are that good on defense. Jim, J- Drew Holiday takes the, the uh, most demanding offensive assignment um, almost every game, and it don't even matter what position it is. It could it could be Kevin Durant. They're gonna put Drew Holiday on him, on a seven footer, right? Or it could be Tatum. Well, he's his teammate now, but it could be um, uh, Dame Lillard. It could be Kyrie. You know, it could be it could be small, quick, big, fast. It don't matter. They putting him on him. Imagine if he had to turn around and give you thirty five at the same time. That's what Mike was doing. He was doing, he was, imagine doing what Drew Holiday does on defense and then turn around and do what Luka does on offense as far as scoring, right? It's a big difference. Basketball is broken up into halves. 50% of the game is offense and 50% of the game is defense or 50% of the game is scoring and 50% of the game is defense. So scoring and defending is, is, is the full game. Luca's not doing 50 percent of the game. He's only doing 50 percent of he's he's doing half of the game. He's doing scoring. He's not doing defending uh, at a high level. Imagine that. So how could you ever take a guy who's doing both and ever have them in the same conversation, the same discussion? So Scalabrini kind of uh, uh, said the same thing. This is this is how he talked about superstars and who we consider uh, consider a superstar, and who we shouldn't. The things I don't like about the NBA is when we anoint teams and players that don't aren't two-way players. Mm. So I like two-way players. Mm-hmm. And I think it's, a lot of that has to do with, so my career was 
you know, Jersey, Celtics, Bulls. And the best player was Kid, you, Rose. You guys took so much pride defensively. Mm. So I just know the league like that. I don't like it when guys don't take pride on that side of the ball. I right. think it's kind of embarrassing to to anoint people stars, superstars, or guys that we, we say they're future MVPs and they ain't playing both sides of the ball. Right. And I don't think that we talk about that enough. When we talk about MVP and stuff like that, we only talk about offense. We don't talk about the defensive side. So that's the only thing I don't like about the NBA now. But I do love the pace, the space, the spacing. I do like the, the beautiful game that it is. I just don't like when we anoint stars without defense. He, he spoke the whole truth. While we're anointing guys as stars and superstars. And you know what? I don't mind a guy that's, uh, that plays one in the court being considered a superstar because Luka is 100% a superstar. I ain't taking nothing away from him. But when you get in a conversation amongst other superstars and those superstars happen to be two-way players, I have to bring you down a notch. And if we take that uh, uh, with the current superstars is in the league, I think Tatum is a superstar. I think Kevin Durant is a superstar. I think uh, SGA is a superstar. I think Anthony Edwards is a superstar. I think uh, Anthony Davis is a superstar. I think Giannis is a superstar. I think Booker is a superstar. When you start naming these guys, these guys are two-way players. They're playing. I think Darren Fox is a superstar. These guys, you can put Darren Fox if you if you watch him in that uh, series against the Warriors. It was him. Now he he had he had to put up as much points as Steph, and then guard Steph and chase him around. Steph wasn't guarding Fox. Fox was guarding Steph very well and then putting up the same amount of points. That's a huge responsibility, right? And I'm not saying Steph is a slouch defensively, but you're not going to use Steph to go stop and shut somebody. Hey, we need you to guard this dude without help. That Steph is not your guy for that. But Steph is a better defender than Luka, for sure. He's he's He puts in more effort than Luka. So these are two-way players. There's always an exception to the rule. There are some players who just would never be that good defensively just naturally because they got slow feet. Most of those players usually play in the post. Like Jokic, yeah. I mean, he's not going to block. Like what a job of a seven-footer is is to protect the rim. So Jokic is not doing it at a high level. He's not protecting the rim and 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 going over and blocking shots from the weak side or whatever. He's not doing it. Embiid is. Gobert is, but Jokic is not. And Jokic is also not out there stopping nobody on the perimeter because of his slow feet, right? So only thing we can expect from Jokic, you're probably never going to be an elite defender. However, your effort needs to be A+. plus. You can't be a below-average defender and have below-average effort, which is what we was getting from Luka for years. I think his effort is a little bit more this season. I see it more. So I give him credit wise. I see it more now. Right. But for years, his effort was not there at all. And he was uh, dog food on defense. Uh, like they was picking on him. They picked on him uh, uh, in, in the Phoenix series. I mean, the Phoenix game uh, uh, last week, they picked on him. We just go go at Luca, And it worked. It worked. And the crazy thing about it is. <laughs> all the guys I named are not in the MVP discussion, but Luca is. Like Tatum is the best player on the best team in the league with the best defense and a top three offensive rating. He's averaging 28 and nine rebounds and five assists or something like that. And then he plays elite defense. But the way the NBA has trained the fan and trained the media is to say, well, Luca is averaging close to a triple double. We value that. You, we value the triple double more than we value winning. We value the triple double more than we value defense. So the defense that Tatum is playing and the winning that he is doing is valued less than the triple double that Luca is averaging. Even though Luca is almost out of the out of the uh, playoff race, you know he was just the eight seed. That they they got a win against Orlando, so I think they jumped to the six seed. So he's in the play in. And if they have a bad night in that play in, they're not they're not even in the playoffs. 
So he's he's on the verge of not making the playoffs. So the winning is not really there. Only thing that's there is the assist and the amazing uh, seventy three point nights and the triple doubles. That's that. It's just the triple doubles and amazing performances. When did we start valuing amazing performances over winning and over defense? Amazing performances and triple doubles should never come before defense, man. Never. Right. Uh, I'm not going to open the phone lines up for this topic, man. But uh, the last topic, I will open it up, man, because we got to get into uh, the Joel and B situation. A lot of people saying he duck and smoke, which is interesting. Uh, but here's here's how Gears Arena and uh, Coach Mike Malone uh, discussed it. A week and a half ago, Embiid and Jokic faced off for the first time this season. Embiid won the battle with 41, 10 dimes, and 7 boards, and, and a Sixers win. All eyes were on the rematch this past Saturday, but 15 minutes before the game, Embiid was a late scratch with a lingering knee injury. And when he finally came out of the locker room for the fourth quarter, the Nuggets fans let him know about it. <laughs> <laughs> Turn that up. Turn that up. Uh, shout out to a B for embracing the moment and still trolling. Despite not playing the game. So after the game, Mike Malone wanted some answers on why Embiid did not play. Mike Malone. I don't know how you go from being active, available, to out. And I'm sure the league will do their due diligence and because that's frowned upon. And we've had situations this year where we've talked to the league and they told us if a player goes from being active to out, there's going to be an investigation. So, you know, I'm sure that'll happen. And I'm sure that Joel hurt his, he hurt his knee in the Indiana game. Like, that's real. Like, we watched the game. He hurt his knee in the Indiana game. So I'm sure he is hurt, but. Uh, Mike Malone with some textbook dry snitching. Uh, so according to Shams, the NBA is expected <laughs> to investigate the Sixers decision to sit out and beat in the game. But it should also be noted that Embiid is out tonight against the Blazers with that same. What the fuck does he care for? He want the he want to see the matchup just no, like everybody else. Like, yeah. no, 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 man, fuck that. Like, are you trying to win a game or not? Like, it means more to him. No, what I'm no, saying I'm is, I mean, you're a I coach, and the guy's best player is not playing. Why the fuck do you, are you so concerned? That that's the easier win for you. Shut the fuck up and just play the game, win, and keep it moving. Oh yeah, we why and MB playing. <laughs> Because I wanted to I, I wanted to make the game a little bit harder for us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> yeah. Mike, Mike Malone gets involved in this BS too much, man. Uh <laughs> last year he 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 was he was in the press uh, in the uh, uh press conferences talking about the Kendrick Perkins thing when Kendrick Perkins was was calling out the MVP for what it was and all this stuff. And and Mike Malone had to come in and protect this guy. In that situation too, so he he's not shy. But in this situation, I would have loved to see him not say nothing at all, like because um, like Gil said, it don't make sense. Like, why would you even care that the player that was coming to beat y'all, y'all 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 just lost to them, and he gave y'all forty two and like twenty. He just just bust your player's tail. If he's not playing, you should be happy. He's not playing. That's a win for y'all. Um. But maybe this is just a, a opportunity for him to throw a little narrative out there that's going to work against MB in the MVP race, which will you know would benefit his player. So I think that might be his motivation because I I doubt that he oh man we won't MB to play man because we want to potentially lose his game. I, I doubt that he wanted that. But on the other hand, um, I don't think that Joel Embiid is ducking. Jokic at all actually every time they play Jokic for the last three or four years he's really outplayed Jokic every single time but I will admit that every time they play is in Philly so he's not ducking Jokic in Philly so that means he's not ducking Jokic what he really is ducking is either Denver and that high altitude maybe you know uh maybe his his breathing is not good there I, I heard a lot about that high altitude in Mal uh, uh Denver, Denver, uh, Colorado, right? Or maybe he's legitly injured in those games. And Mike Brown just admitted that, yeah, we seen him tweak his knee against Indiana the game before. So we know he got a legit knee injury. So I don't understand what your beef is about. I think he, he 
what he said his beef was he was active on the on the uh on the lineup before the game and just before the game he went inactive. So they they call a foul on the fact that oh man, we thought that y'all was gonna play, you know. Uh so the whole week we've been game planning for MB, but then y'all come out and no MB. So now our game plan is 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 oh man, we gotta go to plan B. Right. So uh may, maybe that's maybe Philly always knew uh Joel wasn't go, wasn't gonna play. Uh, but they didn't want to. Uh, I think somebody in the comment said they they didn't want to show their hand too early, which is uh, what a lot of teams do a lot, you know. So if there's no rules against that, I think the uh, NFL may have just recently put a rule in there where you have to have your inactives listed uh, a certain day before, you know, a couple of days before the game. But the reason they didn't do that for a competitive edge, they they did that because of sports betting, right? They said the NFL, you must tell us who's not playing. Because Vegas needs to know, right? Vegas needs to be able to put their <laughs> need to make their point spread, and we got to know who's hurt and who's not playing. So they did that for Vegas. Um, so I, that might be coming for the NBA pretty soon. Uh, and and like I said, man, he's he's calling for an investigation, which is which is dumb. But you know, may, may, maybe maybe he's mad because he didn't get a chance to game plan um, uh, uh, for for a team without having. Uh, MB, so maybe that's what it was. But <clears throat> that's my last topic. I'm going to open the phone line up for uh, one last time. Everything is open for discussion. This topic first, but if anything that I discuss uh, uh, throughout this episode, we got 10 minutes to go through all of this stuff, man. So I hold all the phone calls to about two minutes on this. But the uh, the phone line is open and the number is on the screen. Y'all can call in and let me know what y'all think, man. There's a lot of comments in, in the comment section, so I know y'all got something to say about it. What's going on, brother? What, what's your thoughts? Oh, I'm Actually, sorry. People, hey, can you hear me? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I, I I had I had the mute button on. I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, what's I'm going on? What's your thoughts? Um, actually, you can find it on YouTube. Her came out and said and be scared, man, because he ain't played in Denver in four years, bro. In four years. Yeah, but why? Why? I mean, because he can't be scared of uh, Jokic because he's played Jokic several times. I don't know, man. It just seems like every time they play in Philly, he good, but every time they go to Denver, he ain't. Yeah, but I mean, why? Why though? Why you think that? Well, they did show some of the statistics and shit. Like the last four time in the last four years, when he when he didn't play that, he played the very next game. Now this time he was smart. He didn't play the next game, so so it looked like he really is hurt. But seemed a little suspect to me. I don't know. I ain't really tripping though. I mean, I I, I mean, I just feel like Jokic should have got the MVP last year too, though. I mean, just that's just I don't, me. feel, I don't feel like that though. This, this is this is how I feel about the MVP uh, with that controversy. I felt like the first MVP that Jokic got, he deserved the hundred percent. There was a year Denver was at at, at the top of the uh, seating. Um, that was a year, that was a year Jokic. Uh, I mean, it was the first time we seen a big man uh, average close to a triple double. You right. know, so you know, yeah, he deserved that MVP. Then the next year, um, Embiid was playing lights out, and mm-hmm. uh, I think Embiid deserved that MVP that year. But the thing is, we we seen Jokic almost average a triple double for his first MVP, and guess what? He did his second MVP. He got he even. He, 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 yeah, well, he was closer. He did, I don't think he averaged it. He was very close. So the voters was thinking like, man, this we gave him an MVP for almost average a triple double, and he got even closer this year. But he also was the number six seed in the West because Jamal Murray wasn't playing, and uh, Michael Porter Jr. was out as well. So Jamal Murray had that uh, torn ACL, and 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 uh, MPJ had the um, had the back surgery, but he had. DeMarcus Cousins coming off the bench, you know, he had uh, he had some other players. I think he had uh, Aaron Gordon uh, uh, then, but he didn't have his mm-hmm. number two and his number three. So the M- the media made an excuse for him and said, "Well, we usually don't give the six seed the MVP because right. we didn't we yeah. didn't give Kobe the MVP when he was in the six seed. We gave it to Nash, mm-hmm. right? So we usually don't give the six seed the MB- MVP, but he almost averaged a triple double." And the last person who was in the 60 who got the MVP was Westbrook, and he did average a triple-double. 
So once again, right. they, they're giving more credit to the triple double than they are with winning and defense because Jokic also wasn't playing defense. He just averaged right. close to a triple double and uh and he didn't play any defense at all and he didn't win at a high level. Mm -hmm. So MB okay. deserve MB deserved that MVP that year. La okay, well, la la last okay. year, last year. MB, uh, MB came out and did even more than what he did the year that he deserved it the year before, and his defensive numbers was through the roof. He was as, as good as a, a rim protector as the number one shot block in the, in, in the uh, league, which was Brooke Lopez or whoever the case may be. Joel was that good on defense. Okay, but this year, ain't no, this year ain't no excuses because uh, that, that egg they laid against the Celtics, I won't forget that. He better get further than the second round this year. I don't, sure, think, I, I, don't, I don't think that has anything to do with the MVP. And what about the egg that no, 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 Jokic no, no, no. laid I'm against Memphis? About, I'm, 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 I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about what they do going forward. He better get past the second round this year, man, because he playing like a damn MVP. I give it to him. For sure. The dude doing everything he can do. You know what I'm saying? So, and as uh, you said, everything on the table, I just wanted to make a quick note. Scalabrini said, the he, he he said the beautiful basketball. I love that. It's not, bro. It's really not. He's averaging forty threes a game, dog. I mean, I could go back on YouTube and find a Lakers game from back in the eighties where they could either run you to death or they could do half court sets where they give it to Kareem or they give it to Worthy or they give it to uh uh Byron Scott on the on the spot up. You had way more options back in the day, bro. That's all I'm saying. It seemed like. Today is cookie cutter, you know. Yeah. Ain't no mid range threes all the time. Or you go into the hoop. It's it's just not it's not beautiful basketball to me no more, bro. I agree. I agree. I'm sorry. It just don't seem like beautiful basketball, you know. Yeah, that's true. All right, that's man. Appreciate said. it, Jules. Man, let I'm me let me head, let me let me get somebody else in here. Let me get two more calls. I got five minutes to get them in here. All right, get them in. Yeah, y'all get 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 on man down sports. All right, brother. Thank you. All right, we got we got uh we got time for two more calls. Let's get let's get those in there. Uh any topic, pr preferably this Joel and B duck and smoke narrative. Um, uh, but you know, everything else is open game as well. Uh any any anything you want to come in here and freestyle about. And shout out to all the members, man. I, I appreciate Wiz Man balling uh uh becoming a new member. Um uh, we're gonna get y'all in on one of the full panels for sure. Uh, starting starting in February, uh, we go get, get we go try to do it once a month, which we, we might be able to get it twice a month. We'll see, but um, that's if we reach uh, our, our threshold of ten members. Right now, we at three, so we get ten members. We are gonna start rotating y'all in um, on, on uh, one of the Fridays when we do the full panel, man. That's gonna be real dope, man. Cause get to have a whole full episode with somebody that uh that you know they usually watch the show from. You know, from you know, from uh, the comment section for y'all to join us is gonna be real dope, man. So uh, I, I can't wait. Old heads always whining. <laughs> y'all like this new school basketball? Y'all really like it? All right, man. Look like uh, that's it for the phone calls, man. Uh, so that's it for the show. Uh, it was four good topics, man. I appreciate everybody for uh, joining in. I appreciate the super chats. All the comments and all this stuff, man. Dog, I wish I could get to all the comments, man. It's some good comments in there. I get I get to read them after the show and, and respond to some of them, man. But good grief. Man, like the comment section is 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 where all the fun be at, man. Y'all y'all be live in there. Yeah, y'all be in there, DC Slim. Yeah, protagonist great. Yeah, yeah, it was a great show. I appreciate it. Yeah, it was good, man. So um uh real quick, uh don't forget, man, another way you can support the show. Uh if, you know, if you're not sharing it, if you're not hitting the like button, if you're not joining in on the comment section, those are the easiest way to do it. Uh, but you could also do it uh financially and you can you can become a member. Uh that helps a lot. That helps that helps me have a reason to keep coming in here. Uh uh also uh, super chats help. The cash app is in the uh, in the description. You can you can hit that, that helps as well. Um uh oh you can use our promo code with underdog fantasy uh you can sign up and use that um all of that good stuff you can still use our promo code as well for uh manscape if you want any of those products uh the promo code for that is man down the promo code for underdog fantasy is man down sports uh, so if you go to uh uh manscape.com 
um, uh, you can get, I want to say they it's 20% off there, right? So 20% off on any purchase at manscaped.com when you use the promo code man down. And then with underdog fantasy, uh, your first deposit would get matched by underdog. So if you uh, uh, join and use our promo code now and you put a hundred dollars in, then underdog fantasy will match that and your, your balance would be 200. So you had 200 to work with. And when I use underdog fantasy, I use the I go to the pick 'em uh, game, and I usually uh, put I, I usually uh, uh, a bet about forty dollars, you know. So uh, you know, I mean, you can win two hundred here, three hundred there. If you if you get all five of them right, and you bet forty or fifty dollars, you really could get probably like two thousand, right? Uh, I was one steal away from about uh, thirty five hundred dollars, but Wimby needed one more steal. And uh, he didn't get it. So, but I, I had I had four out of five right, and all I needed was women to get that one steal. And uh, man, when he didn't get it, man, it just crushed me. I was like, man, God, I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can keep doing this. But if y'all want to give it a shot, give it a shot, man. It helps us out when you use the promo code. And uh, also subscribe if you're not subscribed. Tell a friend to tell a friend about the show, and definitely keep coming back. And I'll catch y'all on the next episode, which would be Friday when we had the full panel. Same time. I was a little bit late today. I came in at 5.30, but the normal time is 4.30. We uh, get in here. So we'll be here at 4.30 on Friday with the full panel with football, basketball topics, man. It'll be a good time, man. So, all right, man. I'll catch y'all on the next one, man. Thank y'all. Peace.